In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to build a fantastic looking e-commerce store using WordPress and WooCommerce. You don't need any prior knowledge and you don't need any technical skills. In fact, if you can use a browser, you are good to go. My name's Tim Sharp and I've been a highly successful internet entrepreneur for over 15 years. I've taught over 20,000 students in over 160 countries how to build fantastic looking e-commerce stores. In this course, you're gonna get all the essential skills you need to build out a fantastic looking store using WordPress and WooCommerce. And at the end of the course, I'm gonna share some exciting ideas for you that may indeed transform your financial future. So be sure to subscribe to my channel by clicking on the subscribe button, you know, and like my video and please add comments as we go throughout the course. You know, I'm here to help you. I will interact with you. I wanna help you as much as I possibly can as we progress. I'd also like to invite you to my exclusive Facebook group and you'll find the link below in the comments section. So let's crack on with the course. I cannot wait to share all this great knowledge with you. So I wanna start by saying a massive thank you. You know, I know there are tons of courses out there and the fact that you've chosen mine is, you know, I really, really appreciate it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, you're not gonna be disappointed with this course. It's about three hours long. We've got a ton of stuff to get through. You may never have done anything like this before, in which case, perfect, this course is designed for you, okay? And at the end of it, you're going to have a fantastic looking website. So I thought the best way to start would be to show you what that website is actually going to look like once you are done. So let's dive over and have a look at that straight away. So here we go. This is the site dogadora.com, dog-adora.com. And you know, this is a proper e-commerce store. It has absolutely everything you would need to actually go ahead and either start with e-commerce yourself or become some sort of consultant in WordPress and WooCommerce. And if you've never heard of those words, you soon are going to, okay? Now you might be sitting there thinking, well, this looks impossible. I've never built a website before. You know, this just, just, just isn't me. This looks way too complicated. Trust me, in the next few hours, you're gonna be amazed at what you've learned and how simple it is to actually achieve. So if we look at this site, you know, we're on the home page now. We've got a great looking logo. We've got a great menu up the top here that has all of the elements that you actually need for uh, an e-commerce store. So we have a privacy policy, we have a terms and conditions, we have a refunds uh, and returns policy, and we also have this, my account, which is basically somebody can actually come along and create an account on your site, much like when you create an account, for example, with Amazon. Um, if I scroll down here, we've got this rotating slide of our various products that are on the site. And then down here as I come down, I got new in, on sale, best sellers, various products that are on my site. And towards the bottom, we finish with some satisfaction guarantee, money, money back guarantee, and of course, the ability to pay because I'm gonna show you how to add in payment providers so that people can pay you should you wish. And these days, nothing is complete, of course, without some sort of social presence. So we have that there as well. Let me go back up to the top. The shop itself, I've, you know, you'll see how these have been uh, organized into different categories, beds, collars, and toys. Now, you know, all of this is for demonstration, yeah? Or this is not a, a store where you can actually go and buy stuff. I wanna make that perfectly clear. It's, it's here to teach me, uh, teach you, excuse me, and to show you all the essential steps that you need to build out a great looking site such as this. And of course, we've got the things that you would totally expect. You know, we've got a cart, we can check out, and of course, people can contact us should they need to. Now, that is not all of the course here. Yeah? There's a ton of extra stuff that you're gonna get throughout this course, which you're gonna find invaluable. But the purpose of this initial lecture was to excite you, and I hope that's exactly what it's done, because we are now gonna spend the next couple of hours building out a fantastic looking store. Okay, so I really hope you're excited about now setting up your very own e-commerce store. Now, uh, the first thing we need to do is to set up your web host account, okay? So basically what we're saying here is that every single website needs to be hosted somewhere, okay? And that is basically your web host, your web host account. Now, 
this is a very important decision, okay? Because you need a company that is reputable and reliable and also has great customer service, you know, whenever you've got problems you want particularly good customer service. I've been doing this for 20 years, uh, if not more, at least in, in this kind of space. I've seen my fair share of, uh, you know, really bad web hosting companies and really good web hosting companies. And trust me, a really good one can transform your business. Because amongst other things, poor performance and slow load times particularly, you know, basically will kill your business. People do not wait for pages to load anymore, even if they did in the past. But, you know, a couple of seconds, if it's not there, they'll move on and they'll forget your website and that will be it. They will never come back. So, you know, and this is your business or at least your website that you're talking about right now. Do not cut any corners. Now, if you like, we work with a great company um, that charges a, a very competitive fee, as I've written here, price of a cup of coffee. And because, you know, I do so much work with them, uh, I get a 7% uh, discount, which I'm going to pass on to you. So you can get a 7% discount uh, with this company, and the company's name is tmdhosting.com. Now, you're not obliged to use them uh, by any stretch, but if you want to, I thoroughly, thoroughly recommend them. And I'll be talking about them throughout this course. So let's go over to tmdhosting.com right now and get you set up. Okay, so here I am on tmdhosting.com uh, and I hope you're there too. So what you need to do is, having got to the home page, is to click on this WordPress hosting. All right, so click on that and then basically scroll down towards the bottom where you will find their various plans, okay? So we've got a starter, a business, and a professional. Um, you definitely don't need the professional. Um, it's debatable whether you need the business. It's entirely up to you. Uh, basically, all you need to do is to go for the starter at 285 per month, uh, minus 7%. So I hope you find that very, very affordable. Um, and I'll draw your attention to, you do have a money back guarantee of 60 days. So it's basically completely uh, risk-free. So all you need to do now is click up on sign up, And the first thing you want to do is to get your domain name. Now, I, as you saw in the previous um, in the previous lecture, the the website I have is Dog Adora. Okay, basically, just choose a name. Don't get hung up on things at this point. Um, you know, you just basically want to choose some sort of name that you're going to be able to use to learn all this great stuff that I'm about to teach you. All right. So I recommend you just basically take your name. So in my example, Tim, and you put things like hot deals on the end or great bargains or whatever it might be, just some sort of generic name. So I will go with Tim's um, Great Bargains, for example, something that just reflects some sort of e-commerce uh, aspect. And then just click on Proceed. The wheels will turn while it just basically checks to see if that uh, domain name is available. And here we go, congratulations, it's all good. Let me just zoom in a bit here. Okay, now you might get uh, whoever the sales rep of the day popping up uh, asking if you need any help. Um, you've got me, so you don't need any help from anybody else right now. So just minimize whoever it might be uh, that day. And all you need to do is basically just fill in the form. Yeah, fill in your first name, your last name, all the normal stuff. Here's the payment information, okay, with your credit card details. Now, this uh, last bit here is uh, also pretty straightforward. So just choose your data center's nearest location, wherever you might be. Okay, it's defaulting to Amsterdam because I'm in France. Click your, check your period that you want to use. Uh, and then you may or may not want to have domain privacy. I think at this stage it is really unnecessary. So I would just take that off, turn it off, okay, which is gonna reduce the price further. And then to get the 7% discount, and this is very, very important, you need to type in success now. Okay, so S U double -S, C E double -S, S now. Okay, and when you click on apply, there you go. You see this. This promo code gives you a 7% off this purchase, and the price reduces down by 7%. So make sure you've got all of that before you finally agree to the uh, terms of service and go to the checkout. Fantastic, so you've signed up for TMD Hosting and you now have complete peace of mind that your site is now gonna be professionally managed and you also have great customer service. So well done, you've taken the first step towards building out a great e-commerce store. 
Great stuff, so you've got your web hosting account all set up. The next thing we want to do is to set up your email accounts. So basically, obviously you need to be able to communicate with your customers uh, and whoever else, and uh, certainly in the beginning, you want to do that by email. So setting up an email account is very, very important. So let's dive into it. So first things first, you should have got an email from TMD with the subject line, uh, welcome to TMD Hosting, okay? So if you haven't got that, check your spam. It has been sent for sure. Uh, and save this email somewhere as well. It's got bits and pieces of important information in it that you may or may not need, but certainly don't delete it. Keep it somewhere safe, all right? Now, in this email, the thing it talks about here is the client area. And what we wanna do is log into our client area where we can manage all kinds of great stuff, okay? But the first thing we're gonna do is, as I said, we're gonna set up email. So just click on that client area link in your email, and you'll come to a page that looks like this, yeah? Prompting you for your email and your password. If you're doing this for the first time, this may or may not be pre-filled in, right? For me, obviously, I'm using it a lot, so it's always pre-filled in. So put in the email and password that you chose, yeah, when you first signed up for TMD. They asked you for your password and your email. Put that information in and click on login. Don't worry about this, just click on maybe later. Okay, so we now wanna go over to services, this second tab here. And you should see something a bit like this, probably on a shared hosting business package. It depends, but your domain name will be here, okay? Uh, I appreciate this is not Dogador. I'm using a different one to demonstrate this. Um, and yeah, you've got everything basically you need there. Now, if you scroll down, you will see cPanel, okay? This button here. I want you to click onto cPanel. And another page opens with, you know, an overwhelming number of icons, but don't worry, you don't need to use hardly any of this. What I want you to do is to scroll down and find email, all right? Email, this part here. And then I want you to click on email accounts. All right, so this is where we can now add in an email account. Very, very straightforward. So what I suggest you do is you set up three emails, okay? support, sales, and billing, okay? Those are the three kind of default emails that I generally set up just in the beginning. You can do what you want, but I strongly suggest you use those first, uh, use those support, billing, and sales, at least to kick things off. So let's put in here the name of the first email, support at, you want to choose your domain, okay? For me, it's Dogadora. Now, if you've just got one domain, this drop-down list box may not be there or it may just be populated automatically. So don't worry if you don't see that. So we've got support at dogadora.com, yeah? And now we want a password. So use this password generator. It will propose a password for you. And what you'll need to do, as it says here, is copy this password in a safe place, all right? Do not forget to do this. So let's just basically take that, select I have copied this in a safe place, and do use password, okay? So straight away the password is more automatically populated and we get a strength of very strong. So that's a great password. Now, all you need to do then is to click on create account. And then when the page refreshes, if you scroll down a bit, you will see that account, all right? There it is. So support at dogadora.com has been set up. And you basically just need to go through each one now. So if I do sales, generate another password. I have copied this password in a safe place. Generate, sorry, use password, create account. And finally, billing. Generate the password, copy to a safe place, use the password, create the account, okay? So in a matter of a few seconds, I have created the three, um, the three emails that I want to use. So I've got billing at dogadora.com, I've got sales at dogadora.com, and I've got support at dogadora.com, okay? So I've now set up my three email accounts. So the next question becomes, how do we access that? Right, well, let's go back now to the TMD client area where we were before. And previously we clicked on cPanel,
But now we're going to click on Webmail. And at this point, it's going to ask you to enter in the email address that you just basically created. So I had support at, excuse me, dogadora.com with the password that I used, and I will log in. Click this away, got it, no need for that. You get three different types of email uh, clients that you can use. I just generally go for a round cube, they're all much the same. Click on set as default, and then just click on it itself. And bingo, we're in. We now have the ability to send and receive email as support at dogadora.com. And I can do the same thing for those other two email addresses I set up, yeah, sales and billing. So I now have a fully functioning email system to go with my fully functioning fantastic web host. Okay, brilliant. Well done. You've registered your domain and you've set up your email. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, now, you know, obviously, if you haven't done that, please go back and do this. Otherwise, all this next stuff won't make any sense. Now, what we're going to talk about now is installing WordPress. Okay. Now, if you've never heard of WordPress, it's a fantastic piece of software, 100% free, uh, that basically basically enables you to build websites all point and click. Okay, you don't need any technical knowledge, so no need to panic here whatsoever. <laughs> okay, this is going to be very straightforward, and especially as you'll have me holding your hand as we go through the whole thing. So, um, you know, and also I just want to let you know that WordPress, I have no idea how many sites now use WordPress, but you have massive sites that use it, you know, really well established brand names that use it, and probably. It's got to be north of 100 million installations these days. So, you know, basically you're in very, very good hands. So no need to worry about anything. So let's crack on and actually install this um, onto our system. OK, so here I am back on my TMD hosting uh, client area underneath that services tab that we were looking at when we were doing the email. So this time, let's scroll down to the bottom of the page once again and go to, uh, once again, the C panel. Now, when it loads this time, just scroll down towards the bottom. And you will find this, whoops, this Softaculous, I don't know exactly how to pronounce that, excuse me, <laughs> apps installer, okay? And underneath that, you're gonna see the WordPress icon, okay? That should be the very first one there. If it's not, just scroll back and forth a bit, you will find it, okay? So just click on that WordPress icon. And you come to the classic WordPress installation page, all right? The only thing to do now is to click on Install Now. And you come to this page where we just need to fill in a few details. So, first thing, software setup, okay? So choose your protocol. Protocol. Make sure this is on HTTP, okay? I suspect by default it will be, okay? Then choose your domain. Now, again, if you've just got the one domain, this will probably be selected by default. You may not even have a drop down list, but I'm going to select mine here. Okay. And then the third part, this is really important. I want you to remove this WP that's in here. Take that out. Okay. Do not leave it in. Okay. Then we scroll down a bit. Next thing, I need to give my site a name. Okay. So, dog adora and a brief description. So something like a uh, uh, great daily dog products. Whoa, having some spelling issues there. Dog products, okay. Uh, that's all I need to do. Now, we then, the last part here is to set up this admin account um, because this is what we're gonna use to log into WordPress, okay, where we're gonna do all this great stuff and build out this site. Now, you can accept the username uh, by default if you want, admin, but clearly we can't leave pass in here as the password, okay? So get yourself a great password uh, and put that in. Okay, so nice and strong, and then change this email to support at, yeah? That's one of the emails that we set up. So you wanna get communication on support at. 
And once you've done that, just basically scroll down through the rest, there's nothing more to do, and just hit this install button at the bottom. And there we have it. The software has installed successfully. As simple as that, okay? So we now need to basically access the admin, okay? Access our, our WordPress installation so we can start building out the site. And we're gonna do this via this URL here, okay? That's the only thing I want to draw your attention to here. So simply just take this URL and click on it. And bingo, you are now looking at the WordPress installation on your site. So fantastic stuff. Now what I'd like you to do before you move on is to basically bookmark this page, okay? So bookmark this uh, particular address and make sure you note down the username and the password that you just created, okay? Because you will need it if you wanna come back in and build out a brilliant site. Now I do just wanna say, just to finish up this lecture, that if you are not looking at this, if you've had any problems during this whole installation process, just get in contact with TMD, okay? They will do it for you. Just ask them to do it for you if you're in any doubt, okay? And they'll basically do it for you. It'll take five minutes and uh, they will let you know exactly what the username and password that you have, okay? So don't hesitate to do that if you're not looking at this or you're frustrated or you've had any problems at all. Otherwise, I shall see you in the next lecture and I'm gonna give you a tour of WordPress. Okay, so let's have a look at WordPress. Now, you're gonna become very familiar with this, all right? So I don't want you to feel concerned or overwhelmed in any way. Things will become more and more obvious as we develop, okay? And in fact, I've got two bits of good news for you straight off the bat, okay? Good news number one, uh, most of the stuff uh, that you're looking at here, you do not need, okay? And good news number two is that for the rest of it that you do need, I'm gonna explain how to do absolutely everything, all right? So you're in good hands, just relax and enjoy this tour. Now, first thing I wanna draw your attention to is this menu on the left-hand side, okay? And then clearly we've got this kind of uh, preview pane here over on the right-hand side, sort of a classic setup, all right? Now, the first thing on the menu is posts. We don't, we won't really be using this. Basically, WordPress came from a blogging background uh, back in the early days, and posts mostly relates to blogging, which we're not really going to be looking at. Media. Media is all about our images, yeah, for the most part. The, uh, the logos and the various product images and all that kind of good stuff that we will have as we build out the course, it's all going to be installed, uh, it's all going to be stored, excuse me, in this uh, media part of our WordPress installation. Pages. Now, clearly, we've got a website. We will need to add pages and modify pages and all that kind of stuff. That's where we're going to be doing this. Comments. Again, not really so much use, more related to blogging. Appearance. Now, this is a bigger one, okay? We want to basically change, we want to have the ability to change the appearance of our site. Yeah, clearly, all, you know, sites all have their own unique look and feel. And that's exactly where we're gonna manage all that great stuff from. Particularly, we'll be talking about themes, okay, as we develop. Next one down is plugins. Now, plugins are amazingly powerful, okay, because WordPress uh, has, it's, it's, it's a basic sort of installation, and then you can install plugins to increase its functionality. And the analogy I like to use is a little bit like when you buy your mobile phone, your smartphone. It will come with a certain sort of uh, things installed by default. Like obviously you'd be able to phone somebody up, you can send a text message, and you might have a web browser on there. Yeah? But if you wanted to uh, get a weather app, or you wanted to check your stocks, or you wanted to book a flight, or you want to get WhatsApp, or Facebook, or any of this kind of stuff, what you do is you download the uh, appropriate app, yeah? It comes down from the iTunes store or from the Play Store, depending on what operating system you have. But you download those apps. Some of them are paying, some of them are free, but it basically massively increases the functionality and the use of your phone. And it's exactly the same principle here. Rather than calling them apps, we call them plugins, and there are thousands of them. Many of them free, some of them paying, and I'm gonna guide you through the best ones that you need in order to build a, a fantastic looking store. Users. Now, we can create multiple users if we want to. We have no need. Uh, we've got the one user that we used to set up initially, and if you click on that and go into it, you will see that installed. Um, you know, that's basically all we need at the moment. We don't need to uh, create any new users. Tools. 
Um, we won't be using this at all. Yeah, there's no need. We don't need to do any import or export stuff. And then settings, we might just brush against this, but but ever so lightly. All right. So basically, that is it. You know, feel free to click around. Um, you will find it very very simple to use. You can't break anything. Don't worry about it. Just take a bit of time to look at it. Now. What I want to draw your attention to as well is up here, where we've got this uh, little homepage thing, Dogadora and Visit Site. Because what we've got, as well as installing this back end, right, we've actually also got a website, albeit not great. So let's have a look at it. So here it is, okay? Now, I, I did say it wasn't great, <laughs> okay? And clearly, it looks nothing like that website that we talked about in the very, very first uh, lecture when I introduced you to this whole course. But we're gonna get there, don't worry. But we do at least have something under our domain name, all right? And yeah, okay, it's got some bla basic sort of blogging entry here with a powered by WordPress down the bottom. That is it, but it is a starting point. Now, we'll just, as a, as a word of, uh, not caution, but just a, a little word here about your domain name, sometimes it can take a little while for the name to propagate, okay, what they call propagate. So if you go to your domain, um, you know, quickly after installing everything, sometimes it might not show up. In 99% of cases, it'll probably show up almost immediately, but sometimes it just takes a few hours. So again, if you're not seeing it after, let's say, a day, which is highly, highly unlikely, do get in contact with TMD and they will sort you out. So we can basically now toggle back to the dashboard, just simply by going up the top here, back to the dashboard where we started this from. So clearly, as I said, we don't have a site that represents or resembles any kind of e-commerce store whatsoever. So the next thing we're gonna do is install a very well-known plugin. Yeah, we just talked about plugins called WooCommerce. And what that's gonna give us is the functionality that we're familiar with with e-commerce sites. So things like a checkout and a cart and an ability to pay, yeah? It's all free, it's all point and click, and I'm gonna show you how to do it right now. All right, WooCommerce, just in case you were wondering how that was spelt, okay? So WooCommerce like that. Now, um, as I just said, this is an amazing plugin that's gonna transform our site and give it all the functionality that we need to have uh, an e-commerce store, okay? Um, now, just so that you know that you're in good hands, I think I'm right with my stats here, but um, I'm not far off. When I say something like around 30%, 30%, okay, of all the merchant stores out there in the world, and goodness knows how many millions there are, about 30% are using WooCommerce, okay? So this is a very, very well-known and established plugin. And of course, it's free, all right? So let's crack on with installing this and beginning the transformation towards actually creating an e-commerce store. Okay, so we're back on the dashboard and we're gonna go down to plugins and we're gonna go down to add new. And then over here where we have this search plugins box, we're gonna type in WooCommerce. And this is what we want, okay? We want this one here and we're just gonna click on install now. And once that's installed, the button will change to activate. So the next thing I want you to do is just to click on activate. On up pops this very nice little wizard that just helps us set up WooCommerce in the first place. Now you can avoid this by clicking on not right now, the button down here, but I would strongly encourage you to do this and I'm gonna basically take you through the wizard. It's very quick and simple. So let's click on let's go. Now, first of all, the pages. It's talking about the essential pages that we will have. So we'll have a shop, we'll have a cart, we'll have a checkout, and we'll have my account. So the account concept is a bit like if you're on Amazon you know, and you create an account uh, with Amazon, you can do this here as well. It's an optional step, but you can do this. So we want all this great stuff, so all we need to do is click on Continue. The next thing is the locale, yeah? Where the store is set up, where you are. So I'm based in France, so it's defaulting to um, the euro for me and kilograms and centimeters. You know, I suspect that you are looking at defaults because it knows where you are, that makes sense to you. But if not, change them through the drop downs, and once you're happy with all that, click on continue. Shipping and tax setup, I'm actually gonna skip this step 
you know, there's many things I will be talking about as we develop this course and shipping and tax setup is going to be one of them. So I'm going to skip this step. And by the way, any of these steps right now, if you have made mistakes or you're worried, it can all be changed later. So it's by no means a disaster. You know, if you want to go back and change stuff later, it's no problem. So let's go. Let's just click on skip this step. Now, the last one is payments. Very, very important. OK, all kinds of payments that we can do here. I'm just going to select PayPal for the moment so that we've at least got one payment type. All right. Again, I will be talking about payments. So if you want to select other stuff, by all means, go ahead. But I'm just selecting PayPal for the moment and I'm going to click on continue. And that is it. Your store is ready. OK, so what I want to do now is dive back to our dashboard. There's a little grayed out uh, link down here. We should click on it. It says return to the dashboard. And that's exactly what I'm going to do now. So back on the dashboard and you will notice that there are two new items that have been added to our menu that were not there prior to the installation of our WooCommerce plugin. We have WooCommerce and we have products. So let's just delve into those in a little bit more detail. So let's have a closer look at this WooCommerce plugin that we've just installed. Now, you know, I'm just giving you a helicopter view here. The idea here is just to put you at ease, to, to make you realize this is all point and click. There's really nothing to worry about, OK? Um, you know, I'm not going to dive massively into the detail, but by the end of this short lecture, you'll have a very nice overview of Word, uh, of, excuse me, of WooCommerce and all of the great functionality that we have just installed. So let's go down to WooCommerce itself and just hover over there. Now, the first thing we have is orders, right? So clearly, that is where our orders are going to come in. Yeah, the names of the people that are buying our products, their addresses, what they bought, how much they paid, all that kind of stuff is going to be recorded in the orders section. Coupons, but basically, we can set up coupons, uh, discount coupons for certain products if we want to. Reports. Now, I'm sure you can imagine, yeah, there are reports on your sales progress, for example. You get all kinds of reports that basically enable you to track how well you are doing. System status and extensions are of limited use. And in fact, I'm not going to talk about them at all in this course. OK, it's, uh, it's too much of a deep dive for the moment and you really don't need to worry about it anyway. But the one that I will come back to here is settings, because here we have a lot of info. So click on settings. And what we get are a bunch of tabs across the top here. OK, now this first one, general, this is where, you know, I might you remember what I said when we were actually setting up WooCommerce in the uh, in the wizard that if you needed to go back and change stuff, you could do it later. Well, you can see here, for example, my base location, France, I could change that if I wanted to right here. I also have my selling location. So if I wanted to sell, you, you know, uh, only to the uh, to the United States or Australia or whatever, I could select exactly where I want to limit my selling locations to. For the moment, I'm just going to leave it as sell to all countries. And I suggest you do too. There's no reason really to change any of this. Uh, shipping locations, taxes, etc. We've got our currency. Um, mine is in the euro. I might want to change that to dollars. Uh, and that's pretty much it. And if I did make any changes, I would just simply click on Save Changes. But like I say, there's really no need to, to change anything here. So let's go to the second tab, Products. So here we have our weights and our measures. Yeah, already set up a bit of bits and pieces about reviews, uh, which again, I know that I'm saying this a lot, but a lot of stuff coming up in this course we will cover. Uh, and really, all this other stuff, no need to get into. OK, so like many of these things, um, you know, you only need a small percentage of it. That's what I'm going to show you. So don't worry about anything. Shipping. Now, shipping, what we can do here is we can create shipping zones. Yeah, and we can ship to different parts of the world. We might want to put different prices or different ways of shipping to different parts of the world. So we can set up some very simple and also some very complex uh, shipping procedures using WooCommerce. Our checkout. Now, the checkout, the only thing that I would like you to make sure you got enabled is just draw your attention to the checkout process. Just make sure that this is ticked, yeah? Enable guest checkout. So basically what that's saying is you do not need to create an account in order to check out. Yeah, you've all been on e-commerce sites where it just says check out as guest and you've no need to create, you know, some other form or create some sort of an account and give a whole load of extra information that you really don't want to do. So you always want to have that guest checkout uh, uh, enabled. 
Um, otherwise, not a huge amount to add to these various things, except perhaps down the bottom here where we have the payment gateways. So, you know, we have a bunch of payment gateways. You remember we were set this up when we uh, did the wizard uh, and we clicked on PayPal. So that's enabled for the moment. But we'll come back to this. <laughs> OK, now I'm going to ignore accounts and API not because they're not important, but I just don't want to get focused on them right now at this stage. The thing that I do want to dive into though in a little bit more detail is emails. Because emails is very cool because basically what you have got set up for free are a whole bunch of emails that will go out when certain actions happen. So you can see we have new order, we have cancel order, we have failed order. And these will just basically go out to our customers. Yeah, When they get an order, it will ping out an email, thank you for your order, whatever it says. Okay. If you scroll down here a bit more, we've got the sender option. So we're sending from Dogadora, from our support email address. We can do things like change various function, uh, functions here with background colors, etc. But really, you know, no need. And in fact, if you click on one of these, new order, for example, you can see that we can do things like change the subject and the email heading, but really no need to touch. This has all been done for free. So that's pretty much the WooCommerce tab. Now let's go down to the products. Now this is pretty self-explanatory, I think. So what we have, first of all, are the product list. If I click on this, then clearly for the moment we don't have anything, right? Because we haven't actually added a product yet. But you can imagine this page will develop and we'll have a list of products that we are selling on our site illustrated here. We have the ability to add a product, clearly. yeah. Uh, tags and attributes are not so interesting, at least in the way that I work. But what is uh, very important are categories. Now this is just the ability to group up products into categories. Every single WooCommerce site, uh, excuse me, every single e-commerce site uh, you go on, stuff's grouped up into categories, yeah? Kitchenware, um, sports, I don't know, it could be anything. There are a gazillion categories out there. And that's exactly what we're gonna do with our e-commerce store. So there you go, a very brief, quick look at, uh, at WooCommerce. But I hope you can realize now, or I hope you really are beginning to realize that, you know, for free, between WordPress and WooCommerce, we have got a massive amount of functionality here. It really is extremely, extremely powerful. Now, that said, we still have some way to go. And in fact, if you visit your site, you will see that it still looks rubbish. Okay, There's no getting away from it. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is we're going to install a theme, which is going to start to change all that. And we're going to start seeing a store that looks more and more like the one that we actually want. So our first step on our journey to building out a store that you know really is going to look great uh, is to install something called the storefront theme. So before I get into this, let me just take a step back and explain a couple of things to you. Now, first of all, you might be wondering, what is a theme? Okay. Now, the analogy I like to use at this point is what we've been doing so far. If you think about what WooCommerce stuff, right, with the products, uh, you know, and, and, and the shipping details and all that kind of stuff, that's kind of like the back office. Yeah, it's all the back office stuff. It's the back room. Yeah, imagine you walk into a small store. Uh, you know, there's always somebody in the back room doing all the accounts and all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, which you don't see, and that's kind of the analogy with the whole sort of you know WooCommerce thing. That's all the all the all the boring stuff going on in the back room, but it's all very very essential. And you have the actual uh, the shop that you walk into, the store that you walk into, the the customer experience, all that lovely things that you look at. They're trying to make you to buy stuff, right? Um, now in our world in our virtual world, if you like, uh, we do that using themes. So themes, you can kind of think of a theme as a sort of a great way to dress up the store, all right? Now, there are, I don't know how many things there are, there are probably thousands of them, okay? Uh, for all kinds of purposes, and if you Google around, you will become completely overwhelmed in no time whatsoever. So what I'm drawing your attention to is one that I use a lot, that many people use a lot, and it's called Storefront. Now, one of the reasons why it's used is, first of all, it looks great, 
But secondly, it goes hand in glove with WooCommerce. Yeah, the two go together extremely well. I'm not sure if I'm right in saying that the WooCommerce developers are involved in the storefront development, but they are certainly very, very close. And what that means is that the two work together very well. We don't have any compatibility issues. We don't have any scalability issues, stuff like that. It just works straight out of the tin okay so we are now going to crack on and actually install storefront okay so back on the dashboard now to install the theme what we do is we go down to appearance and themes and the theme that we currently have active as it says here is this 2017 theme yeah this one here. So you might recognize the plant. I don't know what plant that is, but uh, you probably recognize that from visiting your site. So we're going to replace that theme with a new one. So we're going to click on add new. And then over here in the search themes box over here on the right hand side, we are going to type in storefront. And here we go. This is what we want. So all you need to do is click on install. And once it's installed, just click on Activate. Brilliant. So you can now see that Active is now Storefront. Yeah, our 2017 theme has been pushed over here. We're not using it anymore. So let's now go and have a look at the site and see what has changed as a result of installing this theme. So here I am back on Dogadora. Things have changed. There's no question about that, okay? Now, I appreciate this doesn't look great, but we have just made a major step forward because what we have is various functionality that relates to a proper e-commerce store. Yeah, we've got a cart, we've got a checkout, we've got the ability for an account, we have a useless sample page, <laughs> we have a shop, we have the ability to search products, yeah? And we have this business here which is basically telling us how much is in the cart. All these kind of things that, you know, you're starting to think now, ah, oh, hang on a second, that now looks an awful lot more like a proper e-commerce store. Now, the cool thing is that we can customize everything you see here. So let's have a look at how we can do that to get you thinking, all right? So let's go back to our dashboard and we've got appearance, themes, and let's click on customize, okay? Hope you can see that, so customize. And what we now get is a menu, a whole new menu here on the left-hand side that relates to the storefront theme, okay? All kinds of things that we can basically customize down the left here. And over here we have a live preview pane. So anything we change here will show up here straight away. Now I'm not gonna dive into massive detail here at this point, we're gonna get into this as the course develops. But just for example, if I wanted to change the background, I could click on background here, and we've got white at the moment, so I could select a color, and you know, I could just click on uh, yellow. <laughs> okay, now that looks absolutely dreadful, I, I realize, okay? Sorry for making you feel a bit ill. Um, but you know, just a very quick example of how we can play around with this theme uh, in order to customize it exactly how we want it to be. Now, at the moment, I suggest you don't click around here too much because I'm gonna basically step you through how to build out a brilliant store. Okay, but just know that's how we access it for the moment. Okay, now to come back out of this, I do not want to save and publish with a yellow background. So I just click on my cross. I want to leave. And I return once again to the dashboard. So congratulations, storefront theme has now been installed. Another big step has been taken. So the next thing we need to do is just get a few housekeeping things out of the way, okay? A few essential pages that we do need to create, that every single e-commerce site needs to have, okay? So back on the dashboard here, and I want you to click on Pages. Now we've got a bunch of pages in here already, thanks to our WooCommerce uh, installation. So let's take out that sample page for a start. We don't need that, so use a couple of ways of doing this, but you can click on it, for example and then just say move to the trash and apply and that will take that out. Now we want the rest of these for the moment but a page that we do want is the about us 
or the Contact Us page. Some people have both an About Us and a Contact Us page. I tend to go with perhaps just a Contact Us page and leave it at that. So how do we do that? Well, we need to create a new page. So come up here to Add New. And then basically in the title here, just type in Contact Us. Now, what I suggest you do here in this part here where you can actually write the content of the page is that you get a little bit creative, okay? So what I like to tell people is that when they're creating an e-commerce store, don't try to make yourself look like some sort of faceless sort of corporate type thing. And in fact, don't try to make yourself look any bigger than um, what you actually are. Because at least in my experience, uh, if you are basically who you are, you tell your story, you maybe even put a picture in here because you can do this kind of stuff in, in here, right? Thanks to this menu here, you can uh, do all kinds of formatting that you could do in any kind of Word document. You can add images, yeah? So let your, let your imagination just run wild a little bit here. But maybe add in a picture of yourself, tell your story, why you started this e-commerce store. Now, you might not have any ideas right now, okay? And I'm not asking you to do it right now. But, you know, as your store develops and you start to build things out, a very nice contact us page that talks about you is a very, very nice way to present your site. Now, you do want to add in some contact information. And at this stage, because we don't have any telephone number, all I would like you to do is to add in those three email addresses that we set up, yeah? So sales, billing, and support. Make sure that those go into your contact us page. And then the last step, of course, is to save it. So to do that, you can just basically click on Publish. Okay, and now if you return to All Pages, you will see the Contact Us page has been added. And if you want to edit it, you can just click on Edit and you're back in and you can make your changes. Now the next two essential pages we need to add in are the Terms and Conditions and the Privacy Policy. And I'm sure you are super excited about this part of the course. <laughs> so we need to do this, it's just essential. I'm gonna make your life a lot easier because I've written them for you already. So this is a copy paste exercise, you'll be very, very pleased to know. So all we need to do now is basically add the new page. Yeah? So click on Add New and let's type in Terms and con. Conditions. Okay, now uh, we need to put this terms and conditions into this white space here. Now, depending on what platform you're watching this on, you should find terms and conditions either in the resource section below this uh, video, you might find it um, on a link below the video, or you might need to email me to get uh, this information, okay? You're not obliged, by the way, to take my terms and conditions, but if you wanna make life easier for yourself, I suggest that you do so. So I'm gonna grab the terms and conditions and I'm gonna come back and copy paste them in here. Okay, so let's paste them in and here we go, yeah? All kinds of great stuff, which I'm sure you cannot wait to read. <laughs> Um, now, just to draw your attention to what you'll see here is three X's throughout. You need to replace that by your website name, okay? So just go through this and, you know, basically personalize it to your site. And then once you're done, all you gotta do is click on Publish. Okay, let's go back to all pages. There's our terms and conditions. And now we're gonna add in the privacy policy and the same thing you should find it in the resource section or on a link or you might have to email me um, either way I'm gonna go and grab it and dump it in here so there we go and that is pretty much it now if you just scroll down towards the bottom you'll find some other X's as well so again just make sure that's your domain yeah here uh, and just make sure it's personalized for your particular site. Once you've done that, click on Publish. And we're done. All pages again. So there we go, our privacy policy is sitting in here now. Now, you might want to create, for example, at this point, or at least put a placeholder for a, an FAQ site, uh, an FAQ page, excuse me. Yeah, or sometimes people like to make pages about shipping times, how long things might, might take. 
You can imagine there are a few other generic pages that you might want to put in there. And basically all you need to do is just come to this pages section and add them in. But for the time being, you now have all that boring stuff out the way. So let's crack on with something way more exciting. Okay, so I'm now on uh, Dogadora, and yes, it still looks a complete mess. Uh, and, you know, we've got things like the privacy policy and the terms and conditions uh, that we added before. You know, it's all over the place. So we now want to focus in this next part of the course on tidying up this top part, okay? So the first thing I want to do is add a great looking logo, okay? Now I want to replace this Dogadora written text with an actual logo. Now I am not uh, a gifted designer by any stretch of the imagination. So I suspect you are familiar with a site called Fiverr, which is this one over here. Uh, if you're not, then this is basically a, an incredible marketplace uh, for getting all kinds of things done for $5 uh, and a little bit upwards. Uh, and I found a logo designer on here who created what I think is a great looking um, a great looking logo. You know, I told him my site was basically for people who love dogs. That's pretty much the only thing I told uh, the person. And they came back with a couple of designs within a couple of days. Uh, and I'll show you the one they produced and I'll show you how I add it to my site. So to add the logo, basically what I'll do is I'll come down to appearance and customize as we did before to access the storefront theme. And I'm going to click on Site Identity, okay? And here I have the option to add a logo. So I click on Select Logo, and I'm going to upload this from my uh, PC, okay? And this is how you basically add stuff into your media library. You might remember some time back when we were talking about, uh, when I introduced you to the concept of WordPress, we have this media library where all of our images and stuff are stored. So we're going to actually add a file as well into our media library at the same time. So all I do is go and find where it is on my, um, on my PC. And there we have it, it's uploaded. So now what I'm going to do is just select that. It gives me the option to crop the image a bit, so why not? Let's just tidy up a bit. By the way, I hope you like my logo. Five dollars, not bad, huh? <laughs> so, crop image. And there we go, straight away added in. I now have a logo, yeah, Dogadora, products for people who adore dogs. Very nice uh, addition. Now, I'm going to now come out of site identity and I'm going to go into header and I'm going to change the color of my header because I don't like this white against black. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make it white. Okay, and that is it. I have now added the logo. Remember this is a live preview so this is exactly how it's now going to look on my site. So I'm just going to click on save and published and if I go back to my site and a refresh, there we have it. I've got a nice little logo now yeah, uh, things are starting to take shape. So let's have a look now how we can sort out this menu. So I'm going to dive back over to the dashboard and I'm going to go down to appearance and menus. Uh, basically here I get the option to create menus and then add items to menus. Yeah, hopefully that's a, a pretty straightforward con concept to grasp and hopefully this is fairly easy to follow as well what I'm now going to do. So I'm going to create a menu called the top menu. Quite, uh, quite an imaginative name. <laughs> and in there what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in my privacy policy and my terms and conditions. Uh, and also my account, in fact. So there we go, add to menu. When I click on that button, they appear over here and I can move these things around, drag and drop, okay, as I want them. So basically I'm gonna leave it like this and I'm gonna click on save menu. And then I'm gonna create another menu. So I click on create a new menu. And this one I'm gonna call the main menu and I'm going to click on create menu and in this one I'm going to have my shop and my cart and my checkout and contact us. 
So there we go, add all that to the menu. Now, I think what I'll do is I'll have my shop up the top here. I will have my cart, I'll have my checkout, and my contact us at the end. Okay, so save that menu. So now I can toggle between my main menu and my top menu. So here's my main menu, and here's my top menu. Okay, so I've created two menus and I've attributed items to each one. Now, the next thing I want to do is dive over to Customize, and then come down to Menus. So we've got Main Menu and Top Menu, okay? Now I'm going to start with Top Menu, even though it's slightly lower down. So Top Menu, what I've got, as we just added, was my Privacy Policy, my Terms and Conditions, and my Account. And what I can do here is if I click on Secondary Menu, you will notice that it's now appeared very nicely in the top part of my site, okay? If I just click that away, let me do it again, because it's live preview, yeah? So if I click on Secondary Menu, I am good, yeah? So I rather like that, that's starting to look quite nice. Now, if I go back and I click on Main Menu, so I've got Shop, Cart, Checkout, and Contact Us, I will set that as my primary menu. Aha, now we are starting to look much better. We've got a much nicer looking menu, and this up here is looking much better as well. So just before I come out of here, you may notice that these are a little bit dark, these items, or I certainly think they are. So I'm going to go into the header, and for the link color, I will just make it black. Okay, so it stands out a bit more. I like the uh, this one up here, but I want this to be black. So now all I'm going to do is click Save and Publish. It's live preview, but you know, let's go back and have a look anyway. Refresh everything, and suddenly things are starting to look a lot better. We are really moving along here. I really hope you're beginning to get really quite excited about all these various prospects of what you can do with this fantastic software. Now, the next thing I want to do is add in categories, product categories. So every single uh, e-commerce store you go to, things are grouped up into categories. And this store is going to be no exception. So what we do is we go down to products and we go to categories. Now, I'm just going to start this very simply. Now, in my on my site, I want to have three categories. I want to have beds, I want to have collars, and I want to have toys, obviously all relating to dog stuff. So what I will do is I will basically in here type in beds, okay? I'm going to ignore all this other stuff for the moment and just click add new category and it appears over here now. Then I want to type collars. Add new category, okay? And then I want to type um, toys. Add new category, brilliant. So we've now got three product categories. And when we look at adding pro adding products to the site, which is coming up very, very soon, we'll be able to drop those products into these three categories, okay? Keeping things very nice and organized as we go along. Now, what I want to do now is actually have those categories as part of a sub-menu underneath the menu that we just created. So let's have a look and see how we can do that. So to add a sub-menu, we want to go back to our menus that we were looking at uh, just a very short while ago. So let's go down to Appearance, excuse me, Appearance and Menus. And before we get started, draw your attention to this screen options up here in the top right-hand corner. Because you want to make sure that you've got product categories ticked. Yeah, otherwise this is not going to work, okay? So make sure you've got product categories ticked. Often by default, it is not ticked, so make sure it's there. Now, once you've done that, just basically close that again. So I am basically looking at my main menu that we set up before, yeah, with the shop, cart, checkout, and contact us. And what I wanna do is I wanna put those categories underneath the shop. So how do I do that? Well, if I scroll down a little bit, you will see that where we added pages before, a bit further down, we have product categories. If I open this up and do view all, here we go. Here are the categories that I just added, beds, collars, and toys. So I can basically select all of these and add them to the menu. 
Now they all appear below by default, but what I can do is just simply drag it up and indent it underneath the shop. Beds, collars, and toys. So there we go. I've basically created a sub menu underneath the shop menu item. So click on save menu, go back to Dogadora and refresh. And now we get this little drop down arrow. And when I hover over, we've got beds, we've got collars, and we've got toys. Now, if I click on beds, for example, it will take me to a page where clearly no products were found matching your selection. So I think it's about time we started to add in some products to this site. OK, let's start adding some products to our site here. So we have two different types of products when we talk about e-commerce. We have simple products and we have variable products. Now, simple products are just products where there is no variation. OK, so one color, one size, you know, that sort of thing. So basically no variations at all. And a variable product, you probably won't be that surprised to learn, has variations. Yeah. So it might have multiple colors or multiple sizes, just for example. So two simple concepts, which I hope you can grasp very, very quickly. So we're going to start talking about how to add a simple product. So let's see how we can add that to our e-commerce store. So here I am now back on the uh, increasingly familiar dashboard um, and I'm going to come down to products and add product. Now the first product I'm going to add in here, this simple product, is a, a dog bed. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is give it a title, a nice descriptive but, you know, short, punchy-ish title. All right, so I might write in here, fantastic dog bed with folding mat okay you'll see the product shortly that will make sense okay now what I do here generally is I don't actually add anything into this part now partly that's because I do a lot of drop shipping and I teach my students uh, very much to be punchy uh, and to the point with the descriptions because the images will sell the product every time now, if you're looking at this course and you don't do drop shipping and you know for sure, or maybe you do do drop shipping, but you know for sure with your particular industry that you do want to put in a lot more information because it's important for you, then certainly consider this part as well. Okay, but what I do, generally speaking, is I'll come down to my product short description, just scrolling down there as I was talking. So we're now at the bottom of the page and I will put in here a description that I have prepared already, just in the interest of time. So I've written here a fabulous, super comfortable dog bed with fold out mat. Wouldn't your four legged friend just love one of these? I often use questions um, in order to uh, just, you know, get the customer thinking and actually engage them with the page, engage them with the product that I'm actually trying to sell. Uh, by the way, if you want to know more about drop shipping, uh, how to sell with drop shipping, particularly with AliExpress, then check out some of my other courses where I teach you how to do all of that, how to drive traffic to your store, and in fact, build a $10,000 uh, a month business. Anyway, on with this description. So here is my leading question. And then what I do here is I'll put down a few bullet points. Okay, so I've put down super comfortable, uh, great size, fully breathable, made for 100% cotton, and perfect for all year round use, okay? Those are five nice little points that's going to basically give a customer a very good idea of what the product is about. So let me make those bullet points. Okay, now the next thing I wanna do is draw your attention to this middle section here, okay? So first of all, we have got simple product selected. If I just open this up, You'll see you've got grouped and external, which we're not going to talk about, and we've got a variable product, which we're coming to in the next lecture. But we're on simple product, okay? And we're basically going to start off with a regular price, okay? And I'm just making these prices up literally off the top of my head just for demonstration purposes, okay? So I might have a regular price of 39 euros. It's defaulting to euros in my case here, yeah? It might be dollars or pounds or whatever you are. And I might have a sale price of uh, 29, for example. Uh, just as a little side note as well, whenever I put something on my site, I'll have it on sale for at least a limited time to start with. Uh, 
Infantry, this is basically where you can track your stock. If you've got a SKU, a stock keeping unit, then this is where you would enter it. Um, again, with drop shipping, you don't have inventory. That's the that's the beauty of drop shipping, so you don't have to worry about that. And the rest of this stuff I will come back to, particularly with shipping and attributes, which relates more to the variable product. So for a simple product, that's really all you need to do is more or less just put in a price and you are done. Now, let's come over to this right hand side here and just scroll up a little bit because here you see the product categories, yeah, the product categories that we added before. And clearly I want to put this into the beds category. Now it's worth just mentioning at this point that you could put this into multiple categories. Yeah, I'm doing a simple demonstration here, but if this bed, you know, fit into another category, yeah, we might have a small dogs category or something like that, and then it would go into beds and into small dogs. So you can, you know, put one product in multiple categories if you wish. You can also, if you want to do, add a new category from this point. There's various ways of adding a new category. The way I showed you before was just a nice, simple, clear way so that we could build that menu at the same time. So there we go, we put it into the beds category. Now, our last part is to add in the products, uh, sorry, excuse me, to add in the images, yeah? Images are super, super important, and wherever you get them from, make sure they are high quality. There is no point having an e-commerce store with bad images. Yeah? You will do yourself a disservice, you will waste your time, you will find it very hard to sell the products. Images sell. Okay, so I think I've basically drummed that home. So let's add some images in. So the first thing we wanna do is set the product image. So just click on that set product image link and you're presented with your media library. So wherever your images are, upload them into your media library first. I showed you how to do that in one of the previous lectures. So you wanna uh, basically at this point, select the image that best represents your product. So I'm gonna select this one here because it, you know, it demonstrates nicely my product, particularly with the fold out mat which is a feature and it also gives people an idea of the size straight away because of the size of the dog, right? So I can basically collect, uh, select that, excuse me, and then just click on down here on set product image. There we go. So my product image is now selected. Now I always want to add in more images, yeah? You always want to have a handful of images because the, the, the user, think if you're, think, well, put yourself in the user's shoes, yeah, in the, in the potential customer's shoes. You wanna see as many images as possible on almost every single occasion. So now this is the point where you wanna add in as many images as you have, okay? Assuming they're good quality. <laughs> so to do that, just simply click on add product gallery images and then just select all of the images that you want to add to the gallery, yeah? So go through each one and basically select the ones that you want. Then, once you're happy with that, click on Add to Gallery. If I scroll down a bit here, I hope you can see now in the bottom right-hand corner, I've got a nice gallery of images and I can drag and drop these to wherever I want. So I might have this one first and then go with this. And yeah, I'm happy with that, okay? And that is it. You basically have now set up a simple product. It's very, very easy to do. So scrolling back up to the top, what we want to do now is, uh, you know, I could save this as a draft, but I'm just going to go ahead, straight ahead and publish it. So let's click on publish. And I'm done. And that should now be live on my site. Now you might notice by now that there is a permalink here, okay, uh, on my Dogadora site. If I click on this, it's going to open up my page. So let's have a look at it. So here we go. So let's scroll down a bit. And you know, looks great, right? It's uh, it's on sale, first of all, because I put, remember the price was 39, dropped it down to 29 to start with. We've got fantastic dog bed, dog bed with folding mat. We've got my description and my bullet points. And, you know, if I hover over the images here, the person can zoom in. This is a great quality image. So, you know, it's uh, exactly what I'm looking for. And if I click on these various other images, I scroll through them in a very nice, professional looking manner. So that's simple product. Now let's talk about adding a variable product. So now let's turn our attention to adding a variable product. So I'm gonna add another dog bed that's gonna have two different colors, okay? So let's go back to the dashboard. Okay, and let's go to products. And there you see straight away the product that we've listed, 
uh, previously, the simple product. And if you just hover over, just as a quick note, you can edit, obviously, and do all kinds of stuff uh, simply by clicking into this. So I'll let you explore that, but it's all very self-explanatory. Now we want to add a new product. So we're going to click on Add Product this time. And I'm going to call this one um, my super comfortable dog bed. And I'm going to spell comfortable correctly. <laughs> okay. So again, I'm going to scroll down quickly to my product short description. And I do have something prepared. So let me grab that and I'll paste it in. Okay. So there we go. Could your dog resist such a comfortable looking bed? Uh, and then with some nice bullet points, very comfortable, and highly durable, hand washable, made from 100% cotton, etc., etc. Okay, so what I want to do next is I want to add the images. Okay, slightly different way around to way with the simple product. That's just because with the images, how I add the information about the variable product will become uh, much easier, much clearer. So let's go and grab the images. Okay, so they're all selected. Click on Add to Gallery. And let's set a product image. And I will take this guy sitting up nicely on the blue one. Okay, so we have all that information. Now you can see straight away from the images that we're talking about a blue mat and a red mat. And that's exactly what we're going to do when we describe the product. So let's move up a little bit to that middle section. Now this time, we're going to select variable product. Okay. And what we have to do here is click on attributes. Now what we want to do is create a custom product attribute. Okay. In this case, color. So just click on add, give it the name color. And then what we want to do is, as it says here, enter some text or some attributes by, and then a pipe, we call the thing a pipe, separating the values. So in here, I'm going to put in blue, and I'm going to select the pipe, and red. I'll select on used for variations, and I'll click on save attributes. Now, I will now go to a variation. So click on that. And this drop down list box here, what I can do is I can create variations from all attributes. This might sound a little bit weird right now, but you'll see very quickly what's going to happen. So create very vari create variations from all attributes. Click on go. Click on OK. Two variations added. Click on OK again. So what it's done is it's basically created two variations based on the red and blue attributes that I created, right? Now, what I can do next is expand this section and describe these two differently if I want to. So if I click on this little arrow here, this thing opens up, okay? I've got a section here for my red mat, and I've got a section here, sorry if I just expand that, uh, a section here for my blue mat, yeah? So I might want to do, say, different prices, for example, or a different description. Uh, there's all kinds of different things I might do with my two different variations. Now, I'm keeping it simple just with the red and blue. And what I want to do is, quite simply, first of all, select the red image for the red mat, right? Makes sense. So click on Upload an Image. Take the red mat. So I will take, uh, let's take this one. Set variation image. And I'm going to put a price in here again of, let's make this uh, 29 as its normal price. And we'll put it on sale at 19.99. Sorry, I want a comma because I'm in France. <laughs> okay, so there we go. That's that. Now, if I scroll down here for the blue one, select the blue image, obviously. And let's have uh, this one. Set the variation image. And let's have a price. Um, what do we put for the other price? We put 29, 19, 99. We'll keep it the same. So we'll just do 29 and 19, 99. But clearly, you could price them differently if you wished. And that's basically it. That's all the information I need. Now, I've got absolutely everything. So all I need to do now is click on here, Save Changes. 
And then I want to put it into the appropriate category. Yeah, beds. And then let's publish. So there we go. That's it. We have added a variable product. So let's have a look and see what that looks like on our site by clicking on the permalink. So what have we got? Well, here we go. We have got our super comfortable dog bed yeah, with its reduced price, with its description as before, and all these great images popping up as we saw before with a simple product. But what we have in addition now is the ability to choose a color. So choose an option, blue or red. So if I click on red, check it out, the image changes. If I click on blue, the image changes back to blue, yeah? It's magic. <laughs> so it's fantastic. Now, you know, if I had uh, put a different price in for the blue one instead of the red one, when I selected the blue one, the price would change as well. So you get the idea. Adding a variable product is both simple and powerful. Now, if we go up a bit here, let's go back to our shop and click on beds. And now we have our two beds showing in our beds category, exactly as we would expect. So it's absolutely fantastic. Now what I encourage you to do now is to go away and add in a few simple and a few variable products into the categories that you have set up yourself, yeah? Take a moment to do that. I'm gonna do exactly the same. I'm gonna put probably you know a handful of products into each category just to pad the site out a bit, mostly for demonstration purposes. But for you, if you're building a real bona fide e-commerce site, take your time with it, take your time with those descriptions and particularly the images, and I will see you in the next lecture. So I hope you've had the opportunity to add in a bunch of products into your site. Now, I took you through a manual process there, okay? There are ways of automating this, but you should always know what the manual process is because that's your fallback situation, right? In a later lecture, I'll introduce you to a couple of products that will give you a hand in the whole automation of adding products to your site. So here I am on my shop. Um, these are the products that I've added. I added in a few more for you. Yeah, a bit of a variation there. And I suspect now what you're thinking is, wouldn't it be nice to get rid of this weird thing over here? Uh, these recent posts and recent comments and archive and categories and what have you that really have absolutely nothing to do with the site. And if you've clicked around a bit, you'll see that it's on basically uh, every single page. So this is a great opportunity for, for me to now introduce you to widgets and sidebars because this is a sidebar and these things in it are widgets. And I'm gonna show you how to play around with those and customize the look of your site. So back on the dashboard, and what we wanna do now is go down to appearance and widgets. Now, bunch of stuff pops up here, but let me draw your attention to this part here. You can see this is called the sidebar, and we have search, recent posts, recent comments, archives, categories, and meta. If I go over to what we were just looking at, then I have search, recent posts, recent comments, archives, categories, and meta, okay? So clearly that's where this is being controlled from. Now, what we can do here is, apart from being able to move these around, drag and drop, we can get rid of them completely for a start. So let's do that. So very, very straightforward. To get rid of that search thing, just delete. If I go over here now, and let me just scroll up to the top here, keep your eye on the search thing. Uh, if I refresh, it's gone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out each one of those uh, things in the sidebar. So let's just do this nice and quickly. So there we go. That has basically emptied the sidebar. Let's have a look at it. Bingo. And then what it's done is it's filled the space automatically. Yeah? So now we have a much nicer presentation of all of our products. Now let's have a look at some of the other pages. If we go to the cart, that's fine. Go to the checkout, all looking good. Contact us. By the way, just uh, as a little aside here, you can see the contact us page that I uh, put together here. Clearly, it's not a standard contact us page because I wanted to make sure that people didn't realize that this was a bona fide site. So I've said no orders will be fulfilled, but that's clearly not what you're going to do. <laughs> um, the privacy policy, all looking good, terms and conditions, and my account, which we haven't come to yet. So, you know, with a few clicks, I've managed to basically tidy up this site beautifully. 
okay? Now, having taken that out, we may want to put stuff into that sidebar, into that sidebar, excuse me. It can be quite nice to have a couple of things in there. So let's have a look at what we might want to put in, what we might want to play around with. So as I just said, it would be perhaps quite nice to have a sidebar um, with a widget in it somewhere. <laughs> uh, it is totally a personal preference. And I'm just going to basically show you what I do, which you may or may not like. But basically, I'm going to show you how to do it. And then, you know, it's entirely up to you. You're going to basically bring your own uh, personal touch to your own site, clearly. So, you know, let your imagination run a little bit after we've done this and play around with the widgets and the sidebars and see what you like. But anyway, just for demonstration purposes, here I am on my fantastic dog bed with folding mat. Now, what I quite like to do is, if I go back over to widgets here, my sidebar's empty as we had before, and I quite like to put in my WooCommerce cart. So if I drop that in there, and then go back to my product page and refresh. What I have now is the thing has basically compressed a little bit, but I got my cart on the right hand side. I quite like the idea of the cart kind of following the person around uh, in the store. I feel it helps with my conversions. So let's just see how that might actually work in reality. So, you know, let's imagine that I go to my collars and let's just add this one straight into the cart. So add it to the cart. And straight away, because it's on every single page, I get to see what's in my cart, right? Just over here. And I can go to the cart or I can check out immediately from this point. Let's go back to my dog bed, fold out dog bed. So, you know, here we are. That's basically following me around. And obviously that'll build up with my subtotal as I go around the site. Now I do have the same thing up here, yeah? If I hover over this and drop down, then I have this as well. So you might think that that's overkill. So, you know, it's up to you. I like personally to put things in front of people's faces. <laughs> I find sometimes when you have to hover over something to find something, people don't do it for whatever reason. Yeah, they don't do it. But, you know, I repeat myself, but that's just my personal preference. Now, another thing that uh, can be quite nice to add in is the categories. So basically find the categories on the list here. Scrolling down, we've got the WooCommerce product categories. So if I put this up in the top here, into the sidebar, uh, excuse me, underneath the cart like that, yeah, then I might, uh, there's various options with each one of these, these uh, widgets you will see, but uh, yeah, I could, you know, hide empty categories, whatever it might be. I'm just gonna save it as is. I'm gonna save this one as is. I'm happy with all of this. And then I will refresh. And now what we have down here is our product categories, our beds and our collars and our toys. So, you know, it just is another way, of course, of moving around the site. And with very, very few products on the site, in any case, it makes perhaps less sense. But as your site builds out, the ability to allow people to go straight to where they want to go without really having to look for stuff can be a very, very nice option. So, you know, enjoy playing around with these various uh, widgets. They are, you know, it's good fun actually to just to drop this stuff in and see what it looks like. You can see how easy it is to actually do that. You've also got um, various places where you can put footers. Yeah, I'm not gonna take you through all of this because I think it's pretty self-explanatory or below the header. And you can basically look at all of these various things, drop them in, see what they're like, play with the options, you know, perhaps delete them or keep them or do whatever you want. The only thing I would say is don't go overboard. You know, you don't want like 10 widgets all over the place. You don't want your site to look messy. You want to have that nice, clean look. Otherwise, you know, customers get confused. They don't like mess. So congratulations, you now understand the concept of sidebars and widgets. So the next part of this course is going to be adding in the homepage because I suspect you're thinking, you know, where is the homepage? We uh, certainly need to have one, and currently we don't have one at all. And in fact, even worse than that, if I click on the on the logo up here, which is typically, you know, the traditional way of getting to the homepage on any site, if I click on that now, I get this kind of bizarre hello world sort of weird blog thing that's really got nothing to do with our site at all. So let's see how we can add a homepage. We're going to do this in a few steps. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the admin and we're gonna add in a new page. So here I am on my pages. I'm just gonna click on add new and I'm gonna call it home, very appropriately. 
Okay, and then over here, which is very important, where it says template, you know, just open this up, I want you to select home page, okay? And then click on publish. Okay, perfect. Now what we want to do is add that page into our menus, yeah? Clearly we need to have a menu item where we can get to our home page. So for that, just as before, go over to appearance and menus. Here's our home page now appearing. You want to click on that, add it to the menu, and then of course it comes down the bottom as usual. Drag it up the top and click on save. Now, the last part of this is to go to customize and to come down to static front page okay this is the live preview at the moment so we still got this funny blog thing so we're going to sort this bit out right now so basically when I click on static front page I get a couple of options and at the moment it's saying your latest post which is in fact what this is what we want is a static page and we want it to be the home page yeah click on home now suddenly live preview we're starting to get page that we would expect to get so let's click on save and publish now I know this is live preview just to go back to the site and refresh sometimes it's a little bit clearer so now what we've got is first of all when I click on the Dogadora um, icon I come to the home page if I click on this menu item which has now been added I also come to the home page and on the home page itself We've got something that resembles a home page a bit more. We've got a shop by category, new in, we recommend fan favorites, on sale, bestsellers, etc. Okay? So the next thing we want to look at is actually tidying up this home page. So what we want to do now is to have the ability to play around with this home page, to set it up, you know, basically as we want. So we might not want to have shop by category, for example, up the top. We might, might want to replace that with new in or, you know, move a few of these things around. So how can we control the home page? Well, luckily, there's a plugin called Home Page Control. So let's add that in. So let's go back over to Dogadora, where I was on the menus, and let's go down to now plugins and add new and over here we're going to type in home page all as one word space control and we want this one here okay so basically just click on install now and then once it's installed as ever just click on activate Okay, so now what we want to do is go back to our theme. So let's go on Appearance and Customize. And what we have, if we look down here, is a, an additional menu item as a result of adding in that Home Page Control plugin. Yeah, It's called, appropriately enough, Home Page Control. <laughs> so if I click on this, what I get now are, you know, this is pretty straightforward. It's basically the various things that relate to my page. Yeah, so we've got content, which is actually this. We've got the categories, which is over here. And so it goes on, yeah? And you basically, what I can do is I can move these things around and I can also check them on, check them off. So what I'm gonna do is, excuse me. The first thing I wanna do is to remove this home. Yeah, that doesn't look too good. So all I need to do for that is just to check that off live preview and we are gone okay so now we have shop by category at the top here so what I want to do now is I don't really want to have shop by category at this stage I have it up here in my menu already and you know I don't really want it here again this is all personal preference here yeah? you may feel that you want to do this somewhat differently so what I like to do is if I scroll down here is I want to have my new in for the most part and I like to have my on sale and I also quite like to have my best sellers yeah those are the three things that typically I like to put on my home page but as I say it's entirely up to you so if I click that off I got my new in here now okay my recent products you can see how the names kind of relate not exactly but you get the idea if we scroll down here a bit now what I don't want is we recommend and I don't want fan favorites, but I do want on sale and I do want best sellers. So that's now my new home page. So much, much nicer. So we click on save and publish. 
and then let's go back to our home page and refresh. So I've got a home page now that's looking much, much better. Now, you probably remember right at the very beginning, I had a rather nice image on the home page at this point. Let's see how we can add that in just to complete the whole presentation. So just before I do add that image onto the home page, I just want to say a couple of words about images in general. Okay, we've talked about how to add a logo to the site and going over to perhaps Fiverr to get that done. But what about all the other images? So you might think that it's a good idea to go over to say Google Images, for example, find some images that relate to your site, download them and use them. But what you need to appreciate is a lot of those images are owned by other people. Now it's, you know, unlikely unless you become huge 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 that you would have issues but I thoroughly recommend not doing that why give yourself any problems down the road and also you want to create some sort of individual feel about your site anyway you don't want to take other people's images and just copy what they've done so to get really good images and images are so important you know I've talked about how important they are with the products themselves but actually on your site it's it's such an initial impact that is you know well it has, is massively important we all make decisions the moment we go to a site based on how it looks so you can see I've got this um, iStockPhoto.com uh, uh, website up here which is just one of these massive sites with literally millions and millions of photographs on pretty much anything you can think of so if I were to go on to here and type in you know dogs for example and just click on search it pulls me up goodness knows how many very very high quality excellent pictures of dogs I can be much more specific with my searches uh, and you know you do have to buy these but in my opinion for what you get is very inexpensive and then you own it it's yours you can do what you want with it um, there's a second site over here which I've also got here called Shutterstock which you may or may not have heard of same story yeah you can search for pretty much whatever you want now there are plenty of other sites out there I'm just showing you two that I use which I think are frankly very very good um, but you know the, the message here is spend some time spend a little bit of money and get the images you want looking really professional you own them you won't have any problems down the road it's a very worthwhile investment okay so let's see how we can add in that home page image which really gives the site a very nice feel now it's all down once again to a plugin so let's see exactly how this is going to work there's a little bit of technical stuff that we have to do but it's really straightforward and I'm going to basically hold your hand throughout the whole thing so don't worry at all so let's first of all install the plugin so I'm over here on my add plugins uh, page which you've now seen a couple of times and in here I'm going to type in meta space slider And this is the one we want here. Okay, so classic thing, install now. And then of course, activate. And once it's activated, we get this additional slider thing down here, the meta slider itself. Okay, so go to the meta slider and you'll see a blank page like this where we can actually add in the slides. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is name this thing. So just hovering up in here, I get this little white space here. I'm gonna call my slideshow, if you like, uh, the homepage. Okay, and then all we're going to do is we're going to add in some slides. So I'm going to click on add slide and I'm going to go to my media library. Now I've put in a few extra images, that one with the woman cuddling the dog. I've got that in there. Okay, so I'm basically going to take that and then if I hold down the control key at the same time as I'm selecting, I am on a Windows machine here, I can basically then select a few others. So I might want to have this guy here and I will take um, this here those three images let's start with that so I'm going to add them to the slider now before we actually activate this whole thing we want to set the images to be uh, an appropriate size now over here mine's defaulting because I've used this uh, plugin quite a few times before so it remembers my settings but your width should be 1080 okay and your height should be sort of around 400 ish okay that's going to give you more or less what you want so you know that's basically what you want as your overall settings you'll notice there are other different sliders you can use here I'm just going with the default flex slider okay you can also add captions in here and you can also do stuff and I'll show you this in a minute where when somebody clicks on that image it takes them to a particular part of your site so it draws them in right 
So let's do a save. Now, we're not quite there yet because what we now have to do is a little bit of copy paste. And you're going to find the code. We're going to use some code. Don't worry, the code is going to be below this video, either in the resources section, depending on what sort of uh, support you're watching it in. But you will find it below the video. And what we want to take note of as well is this ID down here. Okay, you will have a meta slider ID. Mine says 180. Okay, so what we need to do next is to go over to appearance editor and then click on this thing here theme functions okay click on theme functions you get a whole load of code don't worry about it scroll down here and below here this is where you are going to put in the code okay so go down below this video grab the code for this particular section of the course and paste it into here so there we go I've pasted in the code this is the code I've pasted in okay so add underscore action finishes with this curly bracket thing okay don't worry about any of this you don't need to worry about a thing except where you see these three X's that's where you want to put that ID in that I just talked about okay so mine was 180 yeah and then I just want you to click on update file so just before we have a look at that let's just go back to the meta slider okay so here we are just in case you've forgotten where that ID is it's down here here's the ID 180 so if we go back to the site now and refresh check it out I've now got this rather nice uh, image of the girl cuddling the dog and it will then auto rotate through the images now there are settings on there that you would have seen that you can basically use to control the timing between the images and different effects between in and out I'll leave you to explore that and have fun with but you can see it's now rotating through the images yeah I could put on several images if I wanted to now one thing I would say is don't overdo it you know you don't want a slider with 20 images in it one thing one reason for that is that you know it can slow down the site quite a bit but maybe three four five images something like that that sort of tell the story perhaps a little bit about your site and on that subject if I basically go back to the first image this one here what I could do here is overlay this with some text so I could write something you know come and explore our amazing store or you know a shop now button or uh, great offers or whatever it is something that entices the person into the store now there's two ways I could do that I could actually edit this image itself yeah in a, in a normal edit uh, image editor excuse me and actually write that text on there if I wanted to or I could sign up for MetaSlider Pro okay so a little bit of a premium there but that would then enable you to play around with the HTML in fact and write stuff overlays on top of this it's up to you or you don't do it at all it's entirely up to you it's how you feel about the site so yeah I mean that already has given it a very very nice feel so my home page now looks you know if we remember a few lectures back where we had that weird blog stuff on there that meant absolutely nothing what we've got now is a very nice site products on there you know that can really draws that potential customer in now I did say I was going to basically just show you how to add in a URL that when somebody clicked on the image that they would actually be taken to one of the pages so let's just finish off by doing that so imagine I want somebody when they click on this uh, image of my my uh, woman cuddling the dog that I actually want them to go to let's say the uh, toys page yeah so let's just click on toys and I'm going to take this URL here, right? The one up here, up in the top. I'm going to copy this because this is the this is the the, the page address, the URL of the of the page itself. And then all I have to do is paste it into here, yeah. And then just save. So let's see that in action. If I go back to the site, let's go back to the home page now. And now, when I hover over, I get the little hand. And if I click on that. I'm straight to the toys page so I really hope you can see how you can use that to draw people into your site give it a really nice professional feel you know those two plugins home page control and the meta slider are absolutely fantastic at making your home page look really really great 
So now that you've basically built a fantastic looking site, I know we've still got a long way to go here, but you've built an enormous amount and you really should congratulate yourself if you got to this point. Um, what we need to think about now, or not really think about, what we need to just understand is a responsive design. So first of all, what am I even talking about with a responsive design? Well, a design of a website that is responsive means that it responds to different types of platforms that it's being shown on yeah so it will look different on a PC compared to say a mobile phone compared to say an iPad yeah we've all well I hope we've all seen sites where they do look a bit different yeah if you've got your favorite news site or whatever and you look at it on your on your desktop it's going to look different when you look at it on your mobile because clearly there are certain things that don't work on a mobile that would work on a desktop so what you get for free basically with the whole WordPress design is already a responsive design. The good news is there is nothing to do, <laughs> okay? Now, in order to see or just to, to, to satisfy yourself that it does work well uh, on, these other, on these other platforms, you could of course look at your iPad and look at your phone and look at your desktop, but I also appreciate that you might not have all those things, yeah? You could ask friends to look on various things. It can get complicated basically. Now, the reason why I've got you on this page here that you've been looking at for, while I've been talking is, you know, we're on our uh, theme customization page, is down the bottom here, right down the bottom, we have hide controls. And we've got three little icons here. And these represent, when I click on these, it's going to show me how this site is going to look on the different platforms. So right now it's showing me what it's going to look like on a desktop. Yeah, that's the desktop item. If I click on this one here, this is more, you know, tablets iPads, that kind of stuff. That's what it's going to look like on here. And straight away, you can see that the menu has changed. Yeah, The menu, when I click on it here, is of this type of design. I haven't done anything for this. It's just basically built in. I can scroll down. Yeah, I can move through my site. You see how it shows the, the various product, product images. Um, yeah, it's a very different uh, feel to it, but it still works. It still looks great. If I go over here to the mobile phone, Again, obviously, it's getting a little bit smaller here. We've got a similar menu, and I can scroll around and click through the site and see how this thing looks and satisfy myself that it does look great. And that is an important point, because when you are doing design, you need to keep on coming back to these different supports to see how it looks. Because a classic sort of beginner mistake, if you like, no disrespect, but a classic din uh, beginner mistake is that you spend a lot of time making it look great for, you know, the desktop, if I go back to that, particularly with images, and it looks amazing, and you, you know, you basically, as far as you're concerned, you're done, and then you think, oh, I'll just have a quick look, see what it looks like on a mobile, and actually, it doesn't look very good at all. So, constantly go back to these three icons, satisfy yourself that with the changes that you're making, that it continues to look great across all supports. So brilliant, you now understand exactly what a responsive design is. Uh, you've got a great looking site and I can't wait to show you all the other great stuff I've got for you in the rest of the course. Okay, so we've seen how to manually add products onto our website, but we can in fact import them automatically yeah and it depends on what your aspirations are with your e-commerce store how big you want it to be etc but you do have the option to import stuff automatically now this is done with third party tools yeah extra software and therefore there's a little cost involved now i'm just going to introduce you to two particular products that you may or may not find interesting it's entirely up to you okay this is no you're under no obligation to get involved with these products whatsoever you can happily import products forever using the manual process that i've already taught you but let me just show you a couple of products that you might find of interest so the first one to look at is Ali Dropship, which has become reasonably popular of late. Um, now this is a plugin, much like the other plugins we've seen, so it's going to enhance the functionality of your store. Okay, and I'm just literally going to talk about it here. I'm not going to give you some huge uh, product review and tour. Okay, I just simply want you to make you aware of it. So you can see here on their website that they have two options here: order a custom store and uh, buy a plugin. Now. In my view, you don't even have to worry about order a custom store. You're far more looking at the plugin. Now, the plugin, which costs a one-off fee, 
of $89 is going to enable you to import products automatically from AliExpress. So having, having basically set this up, you will see on AliExpress itself when you go there that you then have additional functionality where you can point and click and basically add these products automatically onto your store. Okay. Now there is a further functionality, which is actually the order fulfillment part of it. Okay. So when you actually get somebody who, who orders off your website, it will actually has a, a part of it, which will go to AliExpress and fulfill the order uh, directly. Now I'm not going to dwell on this because we are talking about just simply building an e-commerce store. But if you want to develop this, into uh, something um, you know, much bigger, a much bigger business. And I talk right at the end of this course about some of the aspirations, some of the things that you might want to do with the new knowledge that you're now picking up. You may well feel that all automatic order fulfillment is something for you. But right now, just think, yeah, okay, I've got that, yeah, I've got that. This thing basically enables me to import products directly, uh, automatically, excuse me, and also to do automatic order fulfillment. So that's a one-off fee of $89. So let's have a look at the second product, which is called Woo Dropship. Okay, so the second product I just want to introduce you to, which is a competitor of Ali Dropship, just to give you some balance, is called uh, Woo Dropship. Okay, it's doing very similar things. So we can basically import products automatically from AliExpress, and we can also do the whole order fulfillment. So it all works in a very similar sort of way. Now, the, the thing that you may, or, or you know, the, something that may swing it for you is, of course, the pricing. So here, if you remember back on Ali Dropship, we were talking about $89 as a one-off fee, yeah? one-off fee. This has actually got a seven-day free trial, which is already quite attractive, yeah? And then we're into a, a minimum of $14 a month. All right. Now, importing products, certainly, you know, at this stage uh, of the course, where you're just familiarizing yourself, learning how to build an e-commerce store, importing 3,000 product variants, that's a lot. Yeah, that's plenty. It's when we come down to here that we talk about fulfilling 15 orders per month that, that you might come a bit unstuck later on should you want to go and build a real e-commerce business. But right now, if you do want to try this, I would say go for the free trial, obviously, for seven days. Uh, and then this is pay as you grow, okay? So you can convert your free trial into a $14 per month if you want to. Uh, and you can take it from there. And as you grow, as you get more and more orders, this thing will grow out and grow out and grow out. So obviously it's up to you between the two products. These are not the only two products in town, by the way. Um, but between these two products, either you can pay you know, an $89 fee one off and never have to pay again, or you might feel uh, more comfortable with paying less in the beginning, but potentially a bit more in the long run. But anyway, the entire you know, intention of this, uh, this little section here was just to introduce you to the concept of how things can be automated and potentially make your life a lot easier. So the last page, if you like, to look at before we start diving into the whole payment process is the My Account section. So let's have a look and see what we've got. Because in fact, we have an awful lot for free when we first installed WooCommerce. But what actually is this My Account section? Well, you know, if you've ordered something from Amazon at some point, you will have been asked to create account. You will have had that as an offer. Uh, and you may well have gone ahead and actually done that. And what you've stored there for is your name and your address. You can see your orders. You can see when orders were dispatched. You can track orders, yeah? And you can also put in your credit card details, which they hold for you. Now, this is not nearly as sophisticated as that. Yes, you can go down that route. There are all kinds of super clever plugins that you can use, but the sort of the basic My Account and really all you need at this stage is a lot more basic than what we have there, which is absolutely fine. Yeah, this is a great, great start. It's a great foundation from which you can build. But the overall purpose is still much the same. You are looking to basically increase customer retention and increase customer loyalty. They have an account with you, and therefore they feel a certain affinity, a certain connection, if you like. That's how this thing basically works at the most basic level. So what have we got? If we go and have a look at my account here, it's just for demonstration, if you like, I'm signed in as admin, okay? And down the left-hand side here, I've got this kind of mini menu. 
I'm on the dashboard now where it basically tells me that I can view my recent orders and I can change my billing and shipping addresses and I can edit my password and account details. And, you know, quite simply, if I go down through these various ones, orders, I haven't made any orders, but if they did, they would appear here. Um, I can change my address here if I want to. I can change my account details in terms of my username and password, and I can log out. And we also have this little thing here, downloads, which doesn't apply to us at all. We have nothing to download from our site. There might be other businesses that require that. So we want to look at how to get rid of that. But that's basically what the account is, simple as. So how does this thing get set up in the first place? Well, in order to demonstrate that, I'm just going to log out as admin. And then I'm basically just going to go and put something into my cart. So let's put in the, the dog bed with the folding mat, add it to the cart. And then let's go straight to the checkout. So at the checkout, this is where it happens. So as a returning customer, if I was a returning customer, I'm prompted to log in as if I, if I had already created an account before. But imagine I'm here for the very first time. Yeah, I have no account, nothing. So as I fill in my various billing details, and we'll get to all this in a little bit more detail in a moment when we talk about um, payments on the site, you will notice as I scroll down here, there is the opportunity to create an account. So having basically, you know, put in my email address and put in all my information, I'm pretty much at the point where I can very easily create an account. And if I click on this, then it asks me for an account password. And if I then went to actually continue to the payment and the whole thing, it would place the order and it would also create an account for me. So that's how that happens. That's how the account gets created in the first place. Now let's have a look and just see in the admin exactly how we can control all of those parameters. So in order to control how the account page looks, we need to go to WooCommerce and Settings, and then just simply click on the Accounts tab. And this is where we will control everything. Now the first thing we want to do is to remove that Downloads thing now that we don't have, it's irrelevant. So to do that, just simply remove the word Downloads from there so that it's blank, scroll down and click on Save Changes. And if I go back now to my account, so we have Downloads here now, and if I refresh, then, hey presto, it's gone. Okay, so that's nicely tidied up. Now, the rest of this, I hope, is fairly self-explanatory. Basically, what we're doing here is if you look at this, we've got the My Account page, we've got the Customer Registration, yeah? Enable Customer Registration on the checkout page. So we were just on the checkout page, and it had that little checkbox, you know, basically, do you want to create an account, yes or no? If you didn't want that to happen, then you would take that off. But, but simply by ticking that, that gives them the opportunity to basically create an account at that point. We also had the display returning customer login on the checkout page itself. Yeah? At the top of the checkout page, it said, are you a returning customer? Do you want to log in? So it's as simple as that. Yeah? That really is not a lot more to it than that. That basically gives you your customer account, everything you need to know. Now, I do just want to take a moment just to talk about a little bit of tidy up that you might want to do on your My Account page. So if I go back there, we have got this uh, cart over here on the right-hand side, which you may or may not want. Yeah. So how do we go about getting rid of that if that's what we want to do? Well, it's very, very straightforward. Let's go back to the admin and come down to Pages. And on the My Account page, you can just do a quick edit. And over here, we have a template, yeah? And if you just basically make that full width and click on Update and go back to your account page and refresh, you'll see that it's disappeared. You may prefer that. Now, there are other pages, like, for example, when you go to the cart, you might not want to have the categories on the right-hand side here. Yeah, on the cart here, I got these categories. I might not want to have that. So again, same process, let's go back. Let's find the cart, quick edit, and let's make it full width. So congratulations, you've now got the knowledge you need to basically play around and set up the parameters for the My Account page. 
So you've reached a fantastic master and you really have. I really want to congratulate you because you now have all the knowledge you need really to set up an e-commerce store. And the only bit that's missing, of course, the very, very important part of how are these people actually going to pay you. <laughs> so let's talk about that. Let's talk about adding payment providers or just as an introduction, I just want to talk about payment providers in general because this can get to be a little bit of a confusing topic for many people. Now, the idea here is to keep things simple, you'll be pleased to know. It used to be a long time ago um, that it was very, very complicated to set up payment providers uh, with your e-commerce store. But these days it's made very, very easy by products such as PayPal and also Stripe. And I'm going to talk about both of those. But the idea is that both of those products basically let you set up an account with them very quickly for free and they effectively take care of all the amazingly complex stuff that goes on when somebody pays on your site by credit card. It also avoids you uh, getting what they call a merchant account, okay, which is basically the process of going to the bank and going through a whole validation procedure. You don't have to do any of that. So without really going into any detail about it, both PayPal and Stripe and other products, to be fair, uh, enable you to get up and running very, very quickly, which is why they are both very, very popular. Now, because I have students from all over the world, um, I often get questions from people, let's say, outside of the US or outside of Western Europe, Australasia, those kinds of areas um, where maybe PayPal and or Stripe are not available. Uh, and, you know, I'm asked, what should I do um, now? I can't give you direct advice, I just want to say that, but what I would say is if you don't have those two, these two products available, talk to your local bank, or at the very least, Google around for what other people are doing to get online payments sorted out in your country of origin. You will not be the first person to have the problem. So let's have a look at PayPal. So to use PayPal, you need to sign up for an account, which is basically more or less as simple as entering an email. And that will give you a PayPal account into which the money will flow. OK, after that, you will need to transfer that money from your PayPal account to your business account. OK, and I'm not going to go into the details of that. It's all very well explained by PayPal themselves of how you go about setting that up. What I'm going to do in this lecture is just show you how easy it is to integrate your new PayPal um, account with your store. OK, so let's head over to the dashboard. And let's go over to WooCommerce, Settings, and the Checkout. Now, you will notice across the top here that we have our various checkout options. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but when we were very first setting up WooCommerce with that wizard, it was giving us various things that we could do, and I selected PayPal as part of that. And in fact, what we get is PayPal Express Checkout already kind of set up but not quite okay so as you can see ticked here enable paypal express checkout paypal express checkout is basically just a process where somebody can pay on your site even if they don't have a paypal account so it takes them to paypal they're not forced to pay using their paypal account they can just pay by credit card so to cut a long story short Basically, all of the major credit cards are taken care of. You know, your customers can pay you really without any problems. So to complete the setup, you need to click on this blue button here, set up or link an existing PayPal account. Yeah, remember, you now have a PayPal account. You will have set one up by the time you get to this point. So we click on here. And excuse me, this is written in French, but it basically just says enter your email in order to connect your account, okay? So I'm gonna put in the email address of my PayPal account. And I'll, quick, I'll click on this button here, which is uh, means next. It will then ask me to actually log in to my existing PayPal account. And then it says WooCommerce developers is requesting your authorization. OK, so basically, you know, can we link up uh, and I just click on yes, I authorize it. And that's it. We're basically done. So if we click on go back to WooCommerce developers. And then just click on that's my site redirect me. 
we come back to basically where uh, where we started from with in fact a whole load of other stuff filled in for us by default. So it's absolutely brilliant. Everything here is now done and ready to go. You'll notice that the blue button has completely disappeared. We are good. So just click on save changes just to be sure. <laughs> And then let's just have a look and see exactly what that looks like. Yeah, imagine we are now the customer. I've speeded things up a bit by just going straight to the checkout. I've put in a product here. I've put in a load of junk information just so I can get to the point where I'm going to pay. So here we go. You know, I've got my PayPal Express checkout. All I do is I'm going to click on I've read and accept the terms and conditions, of course, and then go to continue to payment. And the customer will see this form. So first of all, you see, you know, it's linked to the site, Dogadora. Uh, you can replace this with a logo if you want to, or that kind of stuff. This is all customizable. But the most important part is that this top part is all about logging into pay with the PayPal. So if the customer has a PayPal account, they can pay at this point with their PayPal account. But if they don't, then they can just click on here on check out as guest, right? So if they check out as guest, Then they basically have the option to pay purely by credit card, yeah, in the normal way. Uh, of course, PayPal wants to prompt them for a PayPal account down here, but they are not obliged to do it. So you have a very nice system, basically. So for, you know, almost no hassle whatsoever, I mean, the hassle of setting up a PayPal account and making a few clicks uh, inside of WooCommerce in exactly the way that I've shown you, you have a PayPal account fully set up, and a, and a way that your customers can pay with pretty much every single card uh, out there that they're more or less likely to use. So congratulations, you now have a way to accept payments on your site. So the second uh, very popular and easy to install uh, payment provider is Stripe. Um, Stripe is uh, fantastic. I actually find it simpler and cleaner to use than PayPal, but uh, that'll be up to you. Uh, you create a free account, much in the same way as you you do with uh, with PayPal. Uh, you know, you're looking at the uh, Stripe homepage here, and you know, basically just take yourself through the process. It's very very straightforward. Now, once you've got that account, you will now need to set up the Stripe plugin okay, on your um, site so that you can actually start accepting payments through the Stripe process. So let's go back over to the dashboard as usual. And over here already, I'm on the Add Plugins page, okay? So if I just here type in Stripe, and there are many of them, right? You can see. <laughs> um, and the one that I use is this one down here. Okay, WooCommerce Stripe Payment Gateway. Click on Install Now. And then on Activate as usual. And we are good. Now, the next thing we want to do is to go over to our WooCommerce settings and then head over to the checkout. And now you see on the checkout options here, we have Stripe on the end. So click on Stripe. And what we want to do now is basically make Stripe live. So what we do first is we enable Stripe. And I'm going to take off this test mode here. And it's going to ask me for a live secret key and a live publishable key. And both of those things you'll find is a kind of string of numbers and letters that, that are basically meaningless as far as we're concerned. But you'll find those on your dashboard in Stripe when you actually sign up. So if I go over to mine, for example, down here, I've got the menu and I've got this API. If I click on that, I come to this page and you see that I have these API keys, okay? One of them is publishable and one of them is secret. And what I'm gonna do is basically copy the publishable one and put it into the live publishable one here. And then I'm gonna copy the secret one and I'm gonna place it into here. And I am basically done. All I need to do now is click on Save Changes. And Stripe is activated. So let's go and see how that will actually look on the site. All right, so here I am back on the checkout. So let's refresh the page. Scroll down. And we now have Credit Card Stripe as a payment options. Perfect, right? The person can either pay by PayPal or they can pay by Stripe. And if I, if I select 
uh, Stripe, then it's basically going to prompt for the card number, expiry date, and the CVC code directly on the site itself, which personally I prefer. Then all they have to do is basically accept the terms and conditions and place the order. So fantastic, really, really well done because you now have two extremely powerful uh, ways to accept payments on your e-commerce store. So let's delve into the very large subject of shipping, okay? And shipping is one of those subjects where it very much depends on how you run your business as to how you wanna set up your whole shipping costs, okay, through your e-commerce store. So let me just give you a couple of examples. Imagine you are in the US and you are making your own products, you're stocking your own products, and you're shipping those out around the world. Now you might decide that you want to have different shipping costs for different countries uh, and you might with different products for example decide that your lighter products will ship for less and your heavier products will ship for more etc etc so you might end up with a fairly complex shipping model now another example which is a lot of what i do which is drop shipping okay now with drop shipping you never physically handle the product because the the supplier will send it straight to the customer so you aren't stocking anything. You don't really have to worry about weight and different countries and all these kind of things, all those problems kind of go away. So shipping is really just, you decide on whether you want to charge for shipping or not. Yeah, I generally charge a flat rate for shipping of sort of two to $3 on everything I ship because I feel that customers are, will, are happy to pay for that. A lot of my students uh, don't do that. They're not obliged to, of course. And they, they like the free shipping model. So they just go with, with free shipping. And in fact, you could go as far as saying that, you know, if you are basically just doing a drop shipping model and you've decided that you're just going to do free shipping uh, and you don't care about where the products are, are not, not that you don't care about where they're shipped, but you don't, you're not going to change your shipping rates based on different countries, then you really don't have to worry about shipping much at all. <laughs> anyway, let's dive into shipping in any case, because it's important to understand at least the basic concepts. So here I am on the, on the general page. And you will see that the, the, the first thing you need to think about is your selling locations. Where are you actually going to sell to? You, know, you can set this up here and that sort of default runs through the rest of the process. But I could decide that I'm happy to sell to all countries in the world or that I'm happy to sell to all countries except for or sell to specific countries. And if I click on that, I get the opportunity to you know, put in specific countries that I'm going to sell to. And it's the same story with the shipping. You know, where am I going to be? Where am I prepared to ship to? There might be for some reason that you're just not prepared to ship to X, Y, Z country for whatever reason. And you would set that up right here. So having, you know, basically decided on what you want in this area, the next thing you want to do is actually head over to the shipping tab. So what I'm going to focus on here is primarily the shipping zones and the shipping options. Now, hopefully a shipping zone is fairly self-explanatory. Yeah? It's just a geographic region. So it could be the United States or it could be, um, you know, uh, Europe or Australia or all of the Americas or all of the world, whatever it might be. Yeah? It's just a shipping zone, a geographic region. And if you scroll down, by default, they always put in this rest of the world. OK, a kind of kind of bucket. All right. So. What we're going to do right now is just add in a shipping zone. I'm going to add in a shipping zone of the United States. So I click on add shipping zone. And what I want to do is put in it in a zone name. So logically, I will put in United States. And then I want to select the regions within that zone. So I'm going to select exclusively the United States. OK. So the next thing I'll want to do is to add in a shipping method. Now, there are various shipping methods. Yeah, you could have a flat rate shipping method. You can ship for free. You can have a local pickup, etc., etc. Basically, I'm just going to do a standard flat rate shipping method just to give you an idea of what's possible. So I click on add shipping method and, you know, here are some of the options. I'm going to check on flat rate and I'm going to click on add shipping method. Now what I want to do is associate a price with my flat rate. Yeah, this is always going to be the same. A flat rate shipping method, excuse me, is just means it's always going to be the same no matter what. So if I click on edit, I'll give it a cost here for the United States of 495. 
So that means that every one of my products that is going to a shipping address in the United States, I will be adding on $4.95 of shipping. Okay, so let's go back to the shipping zones. And let's have a look at this rest of the world. So in my very simple example, I have United States and then everything else. So if I click on edit here, I'm going to add in another flat rate shipping method. But this time I'll give it a cost and just for the sake of um, demonstration, I'll give it a 995 uh, flat rate shipping cost. OK, so let's go back to the shipping zones. And yeah, here we go. So I've got my United States with my flat rate over here and I got my rest of the world, my flat rate here. And if you click into the edit, you'll see the different prices. So in a minute, we're going to dive over to the store. And we're going to see how that actually behaves on our store. But just before we do that, let's visit the shipping options. And here you have a few uh, options. <laughs> so what you can do is do things like enable the shipping calculator on the cart page or hide shipping costs until an address is entered. So I'm going to check that because I quite like that particular option. Okay, shipping destination by default is always default to the customer billing address. Okay, so just a couple of very basic options there. That's how I set it up. It's entirely up to you. So let's click on save changes. And then let's head over to uh, the checkout and see how it would how things would be different for different customers buying stuff from you from different parts of the world. OK, so here I am on the checkout and I've added in uh, a squeaky toy, my, one of my products for four ninety nine. OK, and what I've done is I've just basically not selected a country OK, to kind of simulate this whole process. So let's now imagine that my customer is living in the US. So they would obviously select United States from this list. So, oops take United States and immediately I get a shipping rate, a flat rate shipping rate of $4.95. Okay, it's exactly what we set up. So it's added that onto the cost of the product. And now the overall cost for the customer is going to be $9.94. Now we had a different flat rate for a different part of the world. So let's imagine now that we got the customer, but he's no longer in the US. He's in, uh, I don't know, South Africa, for example. Now what happens is the flat rate ships uh, changes, excuse me, to $9.95. And my South African customer is now got a total of fourteen ninety four. So as I said at the beginning of the lecture, it really depends on how you're set up as to how you're actually going to organise your shipping costs to different countries. Uh, I don't want to repeat myself, but with drop shipping, that is generally a lot more straightforward. So really think about how you want to structure your shipping, and then use the techniques that I've just taught you to build out exactly what you want to do in order to get the shipping costs that you want. And now for the massively exciting subject of tax. Um, so this is this is important. Um, so let's just address it uh, as quickly as I can. OK, just to give you an appreciation. So um, the fact of the matter is that when you ship certain products to certain countries, uh, those countries might apply their local taxes to your product. Yeah, they might want to therefore collect those taxes. Now, possibly in the very beginning, this really isn't something you need to worry about. But you know, when you get big, you're going to have to start considering this kind of stuff. So just for example, uh, you know, there's a goods and services tax if you're shipping to Australia, I think it's something like 10%. Uh, here in France, we have what's called TVA, which is 20%. Uh, in the UK, they have a VAT, which I believe is also 20%. Uh, and in the US is different and so it goes on. Yeah, so basically depending on where you're going to ship to you need to think about those Taxes that the local authorities at some point may want to collect or at least at the very least for your own accounting purposes So what we have here is a tax tab. And by the way, if you're not seeing that go back to general and down here enable taxes enable tax uh, taxes and tax calculations. Okay, if that's checked on, then you will see the tax tab. So for these various ta tax options, really in the beginning, I, I don't want you to get confused and bogged down. You can basically, you know, pretty much accept these defaults. Okay, the only things that I would draw your attention to is this very first one: prices entered with tax. So in other words, as you are putting your products in, and it's asking you for the prices in the way that we did the simple and variable products earlier on, you're entering those prices 
without taxes. I just find that an awful lot simpler, yeah? So that's just a way to add it in. Now, as we go down towards the bottom here, the other thing that I want to show you is display prices in the shop and display prices during cart and checkout. I like to have including tax in both those cases. Um, simple reason being I don't want the customer to have a surprise at the end where I suddenly say yeah this product is $9.99 and now I'm going to add on this you know mystery tax of uh, $2.99 or whatever it is depending on the local rates so I will always include the tax in the price therefore it's kind of hidden from the customer they don't have to worry about it at all so click on save changes just to make sure that's good and then you want to click on uh, standard rates okay I'm not going to talk about these various other rates here for the moment you can create other types of rates that are actually related to these additional tax classes here reduced rate zero rate for example reduced rate zero rate I'm just going to talk about standard rates because that's going to give you uh, an idea of what's required so what you have here in this standard rate is, is a table that you build up with all the various countries that you're basically going to ship to and their particular tax rates so let's take France as an example so I took put in the two the um, the two letter country code France and then if I leave these all stars it basically just means I'm not trying to drill down any further within the country we're talking about now the whole of France and I will apply a rate of 20% for example yeah then I could add in another row which could be the UK and you know I said before it was 20% but let's just imagine it was 17.5 uh, whatever it might be and then we insert another row which would be uh, Australia and they have a 10% rate and so it goes on and you save your changes in that way and now what you have is you know effectively a built-in calculator in a way for recording the taxes for each of the countries that you are shipping to now, as I say, this can get a lot more complex, but that gives you a basic start and really just in a basic appreciation of what you might have to do as your store starts to develop. Backing up your hard work. Now, this is so important. Yeah, I mean, this I could have entitled this backing up your website, um, you know, backing up your web store, whatever it is. But back up, back up, back up is what this is all about. Okay. The number of people who ignore this step is is crazy. Yeah, uh, people feel that you know somehow it's not going to happen to them or whatever it is, or just skip it because it's boring or we don't see any results. Whatever it might be, please, please, please do not ignore this step. If you've been in this kind of game for as long as I have, certainly in IT, which for me is uh, God knows how long, twenty plus years, uh, at some point you know you'll have learned it the hard way and then you will never ever make this mistake again. So there we go, backing up your hard work. So let's have a look at this in relation to your site. So first of all, why bother? Well, you know, clearly if we have a problem with the site, we need a backup, we need to get a backup you know, out. Your site could get hacked, it could go down, whatever it is, yeah, things happen. But the other thing that people perhaps don't think about so much is if you make a mistake yourself, yeah? Say you've got, a, I don't know, 100 products on there or something and you delete them all by mistake. I know that sounds ridiculous, but stuff does happen, particularly if you're perhaps in the, in the future using a, a virtual assistant or somebody to help you out who, who does make a mistake, whatever it is. What are you gonna do then? Well, what you'll want to do is go back to what you had perhaps the previous day or whatever it might be, yeah? So why bother on, on, you know, on two levels, really? One, because somebody else might take your site down for some horrible reason. And two, because you yourself might make a mistake. Okay, so that's exactly why you bother. Now, when backing up your site, automation is, is key. Eh? You want to have a system that is automated. I'm going to talk about a plugin that I use in a minute, and for the free version, you'll see that automation isn't available. But you can easily upgrade to that if you want to. But automation, you know, you want something just basically that backs up every 24 hours, typically for, a, for an e-commerce site is absolutely fine. Uh, you might go a week, it depends. You know, you want this system to sort of grow with you. So depending on how many changes you're making, how big your business is, the more automation you have, the better. Ease of use, yeah, if you're not tech savvy, then you want something to be uh, easy to use, right? You don't want something that's super complicated should you have to get that back up off a server somewhere and reinstall it. You want a point and click 
process that is just you know very very simple to use you also want the ability to back up everything yeah so sometimes if you read the small print of some of these backup solutions they might be backing up say your database which might hold the information about your products but maybe they're not backing up the images or a part of the site or whatever it is what you want is a solution that will bring absolutely everything back at the click of a button without you really having to worry about anything at all and the last thing which I think is mega important <laughs> is support everything I, I try to advise you guys on everything I do for myself support for me is so important I want great support yeah TMD hosting the guys that I used to host you know many of my sites um, have amazing support that's why I go with them I find that many other big uh, companies they have support but you know they come back in 24 hours or 48 hours it's, it's, it's frustrating they don't have that level of commitment for whatever reason it might be so support and I mean good support and quick responsive support is super super important right so there you go those are the key points when it comes to backing up your hard work so let's go over to um, to the dashboard as usual and actually install a nice little plugin that's going to do that for you for free okay so back on the trusty dashboard let's go down to um, plugins and add new and let's type into the search box backup and what you want is this one here yeah typically it's the very first one that comes up It's very very popular this this updraft plus I've used it a lot and uh, I can say with absolute certainty that it's a brilliant product yeah one over 1 million active installs as you can see here so just click on install now and then of course on activate and we're all installed so let's go up to updraft plus it's up here in this top menu here and I want to go to extensions I know that might seem a bit odd but I just want to show you what you actually have installed here okay because what you have is for free the ability to back up to remote storage locations okay now you know clearly a remote storage location is super important you do not want your stuff to be backed up on the same server that your site lives on because if that goes down it's going to take your backup with it right but you have this ability now to back up to remote storage locations for nothing now if you scroll down through these various other ones where you do not have you do not have these options yeah so you don't have the support that I said was super important you don't have that at this stage okay uh, you don't have you know uh, the ability to set exact times to create or manage or delete your backups yeah there are various things that you'll see down here now as your business grows yes those things will become important but right now all we're talking about is just simply the discipline of backup and you have that in this free version so when we talk about backing up uh, excuse me backing up to somewhere remote we have many many options and if we go over to the settings this is where we get to basically say when we're going to back up you know what we're going to back up and you know where we're going to actually send it to okay so when yeah basically we can say um, from this drop down list box we can do it manually we can do it every four hours eight hours 12 hours daily weekly etc 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 I think daily is absolutely fine yeah and you want to make sure that your files and your database are both backed up daily now for me what I do here is I will keep seven backups okay that's kind of an industry standard uh, that you keep seven backups because you may want to roll back to two or three days ago or yesterday's backup was corrupt or whatever it might be yeah? so we keep a series of backups going back in time not just the last one every single time now backups obviously take up space and depending on where you're sending it to and what their conditions are you may not in the beginning have the ability to send seven backups I suspect you will <laughs> I'll be absolutely amazed if you don't but you know just think about that in terms of the space that it might take up now so you know that's the what are we backing up and when are we backing up and down here we have the where are we backing it up to and you can see all these icons and there's you know multiple options here now if you have uh, a Google account many of us do then you will have your Google Drive and you will have free storage space on your Google Drive and you can actually basically send it up there uh, for free um, regularly to your Google Drive yeah absolutely fantastic 
Um, many of us use Dropbox. It's another storage solution, right? So you could send it to, to Dropbox um, if you have an account. Uh, I don't know how many uh, gigabytes free Dropbox is offering right now, but I'm, you know, more or less totally convinced there'll be more than enough that you need, certainly in these early stages. Same thing with Google Drive. Um, Updraft themselves uh, clearly offer their own solution, which is paying. It's $10 per quarter. It's very, very reasonable for five gigabytes, which, by the way, will be more than enough. Um, you know, so you can play with these various things. And then once you're happy with what you've got, just scroll down and, you know, save the changes. And that's it. Your backup will be taken care of. If at any time you basically want to back up right now, then you just come over here to your current status, which, by the way, shows you when you last backed up. So I just backed up just recently um, and it backed up my files in my database, etc, uh, etc. Et so, you know, I could click on backup now and it will do it again. When I click, I need to restore, I can click on restore. Yeah, so when I was going back to the ease of use, this is, sorry, when I was talking about the ease of use, just going back to that, this shows you how point and click this is. All that complexity is hidden away. You don't want a complex solution, particularly when you're trying to retrieve backups, which can often be a stressful situation, yeah? You don't want that. And of course, you've got a nice, you know, what you did thing, your existing backups, where you are, and you can manage this process. So there you go, you've got a, a very, very, very powerful tool for free with the ability to, to upgrade uh, as you progress with your business. But my main point is here is please do not ignore backups. So we just talked about backup and the importance of that. I hope that I, hope I got that message over clearly enough. Um, but, you know, we don't just need to sit there uh, and, and hope and uh, worry that somebody's going to attack us and all the rest of it. We can do stuff yeah, to actually prevent this happening in the first place. Uh, and, you know, there's a whole industry built around that. I'm sure you're very aware of the whole firewalls and antivirus and all this kind of stuff that you probably have installed on your own PC or your Mac or whatever it might be. Yeah? Uh, and it's no exception here. We have some great tools at our fingertips, again, for free. Again, the typical thing where you have, you know, upgrade features that you can pay for depending on whether you want to or not. But, you know, we have this ability and one of the best known um, pieces of software that we, we have for this is WordFence. So you can see I'm already on the Add Plugins page. I've typed in WordFence and it's actually the first one that comes up. Now, WordFence is basically going to do all the work for us. Yeah, we're trying to run a business here. We're trying to run an e-commerce store. We're trying to talk to customers. We're trying to, you know, we're trying to do all kinds of great stuff. So we don't have time for, you know, is my site about to get hacked? Do I have this? Do I have that? We want something to just be running in the background and take care of this for us while we get on with our good hard work. So that's exactly what WordFence is going to do for us. So let's install it and activate. Okay, and it appears down here. So let's go to the Word Fence dashboard. So this is where we can, you know, basically see what Word Fence is up to. Again, this is something that's running in the background here. You, should, you don't need to come here regularly and, and see what's going on. It's doing the hard work for you. So we can see here, for example, that, you know, for the, in, in this free package, we have a firewall, we have scheduled scans enabled, we have rate limiting enabled, all the great stuff. There's a few premium things that are not enabled over here. But again, you know, I preach myself, but in these early stages, you really don't need to worry about that kind of stuff too much. Should you want to upgrade to premium later on, then clearly go for it. And obviously there's a nice button here to enable you to do that. Uh, if you look down here, you know, some people get a bit freaked out by the total attacks blocked and things like this, okay? with numbers in the millions. Uh, this is across their entire network, so all the sites that they're protecting. But, you know, they're trying to show you uh, the, the clever stuff that they're doing, and indeed they are very clever, in, in going forward and basically protecting your site proactively. So there you have it. You know, you have now a very, very nice free uh, product installed that's going to do a, an excellent job of protecting your site. SSL uh, or Secure Sockets Layer, HTTPS, okay? So if you've never heard of this, you might be thinking, my God, he's gone mad. Uh, first of all, I can guarantee you I haven't gone mad, all right? I do get asked about this a lot. And um, for those of you that have heard of it, it's basically, uh, it's a way of securing the link, okay, between your website and the web server that it's coming from, okay? So uh, in perhaps a simpler term, if somebody's browsing your site somewhere, uh, every time they make a request and serve up another page, 
from the web server, wherever that might be based. Uh, with SSL, that's happening over a secure link. So in other words, a third party, a malicious third party, uh, can't actually see what's going on. Okay, so that's in the most simplistic terms. Now these days, um, you know, because it's simple to install uh, and it's very inexpensive and often free, and of course I'm gonna show you a free version, um, you know, it's, uh, it's almost like, why not? Okay, why not do it? And indeed, more savvy internet users like to see this HTTPS, okay, in front of the site. It makes them feel a little bit more uh, comfortable with what they've got. So let me dive over to Amazon. I'm gonna show you straight away uh, that they use this by default. So here we go on Amazon, uh, and if you look up the top here, uh, it says HTTPS. Yeah, I hope you can see that, not just your standard HTTP. So they're using the SSL, yeah, the Secure Sockets Layer. So anything I do on, on Amazon is I move around, I click on Today's Deals, for example, that S stays there. Yeah? So everything I'm doing when I'm, when I'm on Amazon, I'm browsing, anything I'm doing, the, the, the data that's getting passed back and forth, yeah? the magic that's happening back there, uh, it's all encrypted and it's not going to be uh, seen by uh, any kind of malicious user who might be able to be trying to grab something. So the logical question is, how do we install this? Yeah. Well, it's uh, there are there are various ways, uh, and it's different for different providers. Now, I talked about TMD in the very beginning, so I'm going to use TMD hosting. Which, if you've signed up for that, this is going to make your life a bit easier because I'll show you how to do it with them. But basically, the idea is that you get a certificate. Okay. The certificate might be available through your um, your provider, or you might have to buy it from an external source and then install it onto your site. So let me show you how to do this with TMD at the very least, because even if you're not with them, that's going to give you a good idea of what you need to do. So let me go over to TMD. So here I am on my, my services page, okay, that we were familiar with before during the setup process. I'm going to scroll down here to the cPanel. And then I'm going to come down here and I will click on this guy here. Let's encrypt SSL, okay? Okay, so this top part here is gonna show, show me, you know, if I had any uh, certificates currently installed, okay, which I don't uh, in this test uh, domain that I have. Um, but if I scroll down here, this is where I get to issue a new certificate. Now, I've got a couple of other domains here, but I wanna issue it for Dogadora, yeah, that's what this course is all about. So all I need to do is click on issue. And then just make sure uh, that the domains that I actually want are selected. So dogadora.timshotdeals.com, I do not want that, so it's not included. I want mail.dogadora and I want www.dogadora. Those are both uh, accepted, okay? And this one here, I also don't want. So I'm gonna click on issue uh, and we'll see what's next. But it, just before I do that, it's worth noting with TMD, this is a free process, okay? It's completely free, the SSL, uh, uh, SSL certificate. With others uh, externally, you might have to pay and then install, okay? But for TMD users, all you need to do now is click on issue. Okay, then we get this message, okay, which if you're non-technical is a bit gobbledygook, but really all you need to know is this part here, the first part of this sentence, okay? The SSL certificate is now installed. Okay, so let's have a look and see what we need to do and just make sure that that now is all properly set up and we're good to go. All right, so back on the dashboard, the last thing we wanna do is go down to settings and general. And then you see this bit here where we're talking about the actual web address. There's two spots here, in fact. We wanna put in the S. Yeah, we wanna put in, excuse me. We wanna put in the S and we wanna put in the S here. So we have HTTPS, yeah? Because we've installed the SSL certificate. So we can now make use of it. So do this and then the only thing you have to remember to do then, of course, is to click on Save Changes. And you're done, that's it. Now, if I go to my site now, let's load this up, and you will notice that the first, what it's doing here is it's calling an HTTPS Dogador in the same way as we had on Amazon, for example. So you have completely installed the secure sockets layer, the SSL, you now have a 100% secure website. So congratulations. So let's talk about building credibility. So what do I mean by that? Well, what I'm talking about is 
When somebody comes to our site, particularly for the very first time, they need to feel like, you know, this is a great site, it's a bona fide site, not only does it look good, but it's secure, you know, they feel like they want to shop there. Um, you know, and that's that's no small task, particularly when we're talking about a brand that is, you know, potentially completely unknown, or at least maybe completely unknown to the person who's visiting it. So there are various things that we can do in order to, you know, make our customer feel comfortable. And that's why basically what building credibility is all about. So I'm going to take you through a few steps. These are some of the things that I do. There are many, many things that you can do. But the idea here is just to start giving you some ideas and let you make you appreciate that building credibility is certainly something you want to think about. So here I am on the home page. And if I scroll down to the bottom, one of the things that I like to do is to add in some credibility icons, if you like, into this bottom part here, into the footer. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. So let's go over to the dashboard. And the first thing I want to show you are the images that I'm actually going to add in along the bottom there. And basically, you know, why I want to add those. So let's go to media and to my library because I've already uploaded these into my library and you're very welcome to uh, take these off the site of Dogadora just simply by doing a right mouse click and save as later on if you want to use these images yourself. So let's have a look at some of the images that I've got here. I've got a satisfaction 100% guarantee image. I've got a 30 days money back guarantee image. We're going to talk about the refund policy fairly soon, which relates to that. I've got this here, which is not showing up in its entirety, but it's a PayPal image with the various uh, credit cards that are accepted through my PayPal system. And I've also got various credit card symbols, okay? Now, amongst all of those, that, if you, when you look at that, when you see that on a site, it's basically obviously saying we take credit cards. It's giving me a nice feeling that there's, you know, there's some security in terms of my money back guarantee. Uh, it's debatable whether the satisfaction guarantee, 100%, et cetera, has uh, much use. But in its entirety, it's giving a good feeling to the customer. Really nothing more than that, okay? So let's look and see how we can basically add in these things into that footer on our site. So what we wanna do now is go over to Appearance and Widgets. And I draw your attention here to this footer one, footer two, footer three, and footer four. And what that is, is in fact this area here, I'm trying to draw a rectangle <laughs> at the bottom of this page here with my mouse, I hope you can see that. And the footer one area is here, footer two area is here, footer three area is here, and footer four area is here. So I'm basically gonna drop stuff into these four different sections and build it out that way. Now there's a little bit of coding here to do, it's very straightforward, so just follow my lead. So let's start with footer one, okay? And what I want to do is I want to put in that satisfaction guarantee logo into here. So in footer one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag in the text thing here. And in the content, I'm actually going to put in a bit of code. Okay, I'm going to write this. Oops, excuse me. IMG SRC equals, and then I'm just going to make this like that for the moment. Okay, and I'm going to save it. This looks a little bit odd for the moment, I appreciate. Now, what I need to do now is to go back to my media library. And I wanna use this satisfaction one. So if I click on here, it pulls up the image itself. And over here is a URL, excuse me, over here is a URL, okay, of the actual image itself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy, excuse me, I'm gonna copy this whole URL Okay, and then I'm gonna go back to my footer. Open that up again, text. And I'm gonna put that in between the quotes that I have here, okay? Basically, what that is saying is this image and SRC is source. So it's basically getting an image from the server, which is actually my satisfaction guarantee image. If you've ever played around with HTML, you'll be very familiar with this kind of format. If not, just basically do exactly as I do and it will work, okay? It might feel, feel a little bit weird, but it's really pretty straightforward. So if I click on save now, and then go back to the site and refresh, then I have the satisfaction 100% guarantee logo showing up, yeah? It starts to look a little bit better. So let's add in the next one. So back to widgets. Let's close down what we were doing before. 
Let's go back to footer two over here. So I go to footer two for the first time, excuse me. Let's drop in the text widget as before. And we'll do the same thing. IMG S, excuse me, SRC equals. We're going to save it back to our media library. 30 day guarantee this time, yeah, this, this image. We're going to take the URL for this one. Go back to our widgets. Footer two where we were, open that back up and drop in the URL and hit save. Now let's go back to the site and check it out again. Bingo, right, so it appears now in the same way. Now you'll notice that at the moment, each of them is taking up 50% of the screen, yeah? Because we only have two. When we have four, each will be taking up 25% of the screen. So the thing will kind of take care of itself as we add in more stuff. But you start to get the idea of what we're doing here. So let's go back and now add in those um, credit card icons, okay? So in the footer three, I'm going to drop the text in there as before. Same story, image source equals, oops, save it. Go back to the media library. And this time I'm gonna take this image, okay? And in fact, I think I'm just only going to use this image for the moment and not use all those other little individual uh, credit card icons. This will do for the moment. So, save that, back to my widgets. Put a three text and drop that in again. Click on save, hit refresh, scroll down and bingo, check it out. We now have these credit card icons. So, you know, the thing is starting to develop. So what we've got in there now is three very nice icons. Now, just before we head to the next lecture where we're gonna add in the social media stuff, which is the last part, yeah, the, the fourth part, the fourth footer, if you like, I'm gonna put it into this part here. I just wanna change the background of this footer now because I don't like this white sitting on this gray. I don't think it looks very good. So to do that, I'm sure you've figured all this stuff out by now. Just go to Appearance and Customize. Take the footer. And now the background color, let's make that white. Yeah, Let's scroll down with the live preview. And this thing looks an awful lot better now. So let's click on Save and Publish. And then I always like just to refresh the screen for the last time to check how that looks. Yeah, that's starting to look pretty cool. So great. Now, you know, as I said before, right at the beginning of this lecture, there is this, this is not the definitive way to do it. You know, there's a, there's a million ways you could do this. It's entirely up to you. What I'm trying to do here is just demonstrate to you how you can do it and get you thinking about how you might want to add credibility to your site. So great stuff. I'll see you in the next lecture. So the last part that I want to add into that uh, bottom footer there are social media icons. Obviously, it's uh, no great surprise that social media is enormously important these days. And we do want to, you know, have some sort of social presence. You'll want to do that as you build out your site over time, depending on exactly what you're going to do with it. So, you know, we want to have a nice way of displaying our social media buttons. Now, the only thing I would say is, you know, it's, it's not the main purpose of the site. You don't need social media buttons absolutely everywhere. In fact, you don't need, you know, logos and all this kind of stuff absolutely everywhere. You do not want to swamp your site with this kind of stuff. What you're trying to do here is sell stuff on your site. That's the most important part, right? So, you know, by putting it in the footer, and that's why I do it, it's kind of discreet, but people sort of don't miss it really either. So let's add in some social media icons. So what we're going to do is, without any great surprise, it's a um, plugin. So let's head over to our ad plugins and we're going to look for something called the social media widget. Now, I don't know how many social media plugins and widgets and what have you there are out there for WordPress. There must be hundreds and thousands. <laughs> this is just one that I particularly like. Um, you know, by all means, surf around and choose the one that you prefer. But I'm going to show you how to use this one. So let's do the normal install now. Activate. Oh, 
Okay, and then we are going to head over to Appearance and Widgets. Because remember, it's a, a social media widget that we added, okay? So back here on footer four, what we're gonna do is we should be able to find social media widget in here now. This is new, yeah, this is what we've just installed. So let's drag and pop that in there. Now, when this opens up, there's all kinds of stuff we can do, yeah? Follow us is the title, okay? We can put some text in here if we want to. All kinds of stuff you can do here in terms of um, setting various parameters. And then, you know, a gazillion possibilities, all right? So if I just open up social networking, here you get the chance to add in your various URLs, yeah, of your um, social media profile. So let's put in this one here, facebook.com slash test. And obviously you'd put in the correct, um, the actual correct address. I'm just putting these in just for example. So twitter.com slash test. Uh, and let's have linkedin.com slash test. Okay, so you clearly drop in your own ones. You can see how much you can actually do here if you want to get really, really carried away. And then just click on save. So let's go back and have a look and see what that looks like. So here we are right now. Let's refresh. And bingo, we have these follow us icons, yeah? These are all the icons that I just basically put in. Now you can play around, parameterize this thing, make it look really, really good. But you know, that's basically it. It is as simple as that. So now people, when they click on this kind of stuff, can go to your Facebook page or go to your Google Plus profile or go to your Twitter or whatever it is, yeah? And access you that way, but it's not completely in their face. So there you go, a very, very quick and easy way to add in your social media icons. So the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is add in a returns and refund policy, okay? Any uh, good site will have a returns and refund policy. And I'm gonna give you one, okay, a copy paste one, but you definitely need to read it and make sure that you are happy with what's written there, yeah? It's very, very likely that this is not exactly what you want. So don't just copy paste blindly what I'm gonna give you here. Um, do have a look at it and decide if you are gonna go into business, you know, if you're, depending on what you're using this course for, you might be using it because you wanna go into e-commerce, in which case you might wanna do some of my other courses, uh, or you might just be using it to learn WordPress, learn WooCommerce, so that, you know, you can start consulting or something like that. Either way, have a good look at the refunds policy that I'm gonna give you. Okay, so let's get on with it. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna add in a returns and refund policy and I'm gonna put it up into this top menu here, okay? I could put it wherever, but just for the sake of uh, demonstration, I'm gonna put it up into our top menu here. It kind of belongs there anyway. So let's go back to admin. First thing we wanna do is create a page. So let's add a new page and we will call it the returns and a refund policy. Okay, good name. Now, let's, the next thing we wanna do is basically put in, you know, copy paste into here um, the actual policy itself. So below this lecture, whatever you're looking at, you will find the document. So go there and grab that information. Now I'm just gonna do exactly the same. I'll see you in a moment. Okay, so there we go, all copied in. You know, I can do some um, playing around with the, um, the formatting, what have you, but it's more or less there. And once again, I repeat myself, but I encourage you to have a good read of this. So all I'm gonna do here is now publish. And then of course, what we wanna do is we wanna add it into our top menu there. So let's go down to appearance and menus. And then we want to take the top menu, select that. Okay, so these are our three items that are in there currently. And then I wanna add the, ref, uh, the returns and refund policy, add that to the menu. And there we go. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that order. So I'll just click on save menu. And then let's head over to the site. Refresh. Back up the top here. So here's our returns and refund policy in the place where we would expect it to be. If I click on that, there we go, it's all there. So fantastic, we've just taken a very nice step towards building out some very nice credibility on our site. So another very nice way to increase people's confidence in your site is for them to see product reviews. 
Now, you know, product review is not only a very nice to see about, you know, what other people think about the product, but it shows other people are buying. Yeah, So therefore, if somebody else is buying, they feel like it's OK for them to buy. It's how we are as humans. It's kind of like a herd mentality. Right. So and we see that, you know, wherever we go on the Internet, if we buy something on Amazon, you want to read a review. You'll certainly look down and see whether there are perhaps any comments and what have you. It gives you a certain sort of good feeling about the product before you might go ahead and buy it. So adding on products is super, uh, excuse me, adding on uh, reviews to your products is super, super easy. So I'm over here on the dashboard. I've gone straight to my super durable rope toy. And all you gotta do is basically scroll down and down to the bottom here where it's got reviews and just click on add comment. And you know, the review would go in here. So you might say something like, this was a great toy for my dog okay not the greatest review ever but you get the idea and then all you got to do then is click on add comment and it pops up here with my name because I'm the administrator here but in order just to change that name it's very straightforward I just go into a quick edit and here I can just change the name yeah so I might change the name to I don't know Dan for example leave the email doesn't really matter and update the comment so there you go if I go over to my site now and refresh my super durable rope toy where I'm already on, you see the review pop up. So, you know, it's pretty nice. Straight under the add to cart, we've got a nice review here. And uh, these reviews will build up. Now, just a word on reviews, because I often get asked, well, how do I get reviews, particularly in the beginning, when I, you know, well, excuse me, if you are going to do sort of e commerce, if you want to get into that side of things. How do I build up reviews? The only thing I would say is do not add in fake reviews. Yeah, they are very, very obvious. I know it's tempting. You've just seen how easy it is to add a review. So you could go ahead and just add in a whole load of fake reviews, but they, they really do stand out, believe it or not. People have uh, big um, you know, lie detectors. <laughs> People can sense these things very, very easily. So the way to do it, in fact, is when somebody buys a product for you, I know it's a little bit of a catch-22, but it will happen. Uh, when somebody does buy a product from you, you just email them and say, did you enjoy the product? Um, and if they did, you'll be amazed how responsive people are. You'll ask them for a review. If they give you a review, you ask them if it's okay to put it on the website. Before you know it, you've got you know a handful of views on each of your products and things look really, really great. So there you go. Very, very easy to add reviews. You've seen how simple that is, but it is really, really effective. And I really encourage you to make use of it. So if you've done any of my other courses, you'll know that I like to talk about this product, uh, Grasshopper, and it is a great credibility improving product. Um, you know, what it says here is turn the world into your office. Now, that might be going a bit far, but, you know, let's bring it back down to earth here a little bit. But it gives you a telephone number. OK, let's start with the basics. So it gives you a telephone number. You can either have a local number or toll free number, which you can then put on your site. Now, obviously, that means that your customers can call you, which is a fantastic. But you can also then connect that telephone number they give you to your mobile number, for example, or your Skype account. So, you know, wherever you might live in the world and wherever you might be, because there's a mobile app as well that they have, you can basically take calls for your business, which is very, very cool. Um, you know, it's extremely inexpensive, I think, for what it does. Uh, and at a certain stage, again, if you're going to get into e-commerce is really what it's what it's for. You may well feel that you want to put that on there. Yeah, have a nice t number up there. People will call you if you feel comfortable on the phone. You, know, you might be able to convert sales better whatever it is but certainly spend a little bit of time um, looking at this product and if you feel comfortable with it then you know by all means go ahead and sign up uh, i really do think it's well worth it wow what a journey we've been on so far together just in this short time so let's now take a breath because we're coming to the end of the course now and it's gonna be a great time just to you know reflect on a massive amount that you've learned so let's just go through some basic bullet points and just remind ourselves how far you've come. So the first thing we did was we set up the domain and your website, your email and everything that goes with it. Yeah, with TMD. If you haven't done that, then, you know, I would really strongly advise you to go back and do that and actually build out the website that I built out during the process of this course. Once we got that, we installed WordPress, WooCommerce 
and storefront. Three things there that you may never have even perhaps heard of before doing this course. And you saw how easy and how point and click and how powerful it was to actually create a, a site, a shop, a store from basically nothing. Then we added an About Us page and, and other essential pages that everybody needs for a website. We looked at logos, creating menus and product categories. And then we learned how to actually add products. I showed you how to add simple products and the variable products. I showed you about widgets and sidebars and how powerful that is, dropping widgets into sidebars which yourself you, could, you can create. You know, the flexibility that you have in order to build any page that you want. We looked at home page control for actually controlling how the home page can be laid out and also the home page slider plugin where you can actually you know drop in images that you want and have a rotating image process that uh, is incredibly powerful fun to use and really makes your site look superb then i showed you the setting up of the customer account you know a simple process that enables you to retain customers giving your site an even more professional feel and of course payment providers. Everybody needs a payment provider. We looked at two basic ones. I appreciate, by the way, that many of the people that do my courses come from all over the world and PayPal and Stripe, um, and you know, I may be repeating myself here, PayPal and Stripe may not be available in your country. What I would do there is just Google around for payment providers that you may have in your area. You'll be surprised what you can find. Shipping and taxes, again, a massive subject, but I wanted to get into a bit to give you an appreciation for what's involved. And then, of course, backup and security, the thing that people don't do. <laughs> um, so, yeah, don't leave that out. Backing up and security is a pretty straightforward process. Just, just do it and then it's done and you don't have to worry about it. I showed you how to build credibility. So very, very important, especially with the new site. We looked at guarantees and reviews and all kinds of exciting stuff. And there is so much more. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty exhausted just reading out that list, to be honest. Um, you know, there is a ton, you know, this is very much a, a beginner course getting you into uh, into the whole process of building sites using this incredible software. So, you know, there is a massive amount. This could be a, a 500 hour course if I wanted to be going through absolutely everything. But what you have are the absolute essentials. You have the building block. You have an amazing foundation with the knowledge that you now have to go ahead and, and really build out whatever it is that you want for your future, whatever it is you're actually thinking about using this for. But I would pose the question, you know, what to focus on next? If you were going to focus on something next, what would it be? What would be your priority? Well, definitely plugins. Yeah, we, we looked at some plugins um, and I think you could see when you're searching for plugins how many there are. And the way to think about it is pretty much there's a plugin for for everything it seems and they're being more and more developed every single day so if you have a thought like i don't know how can i for example make the the cart more you know more professional looking more beautiful whatever there's a there'll be a plugin for that for sure yeah so anything that you can think of pretty much i can almost guarantee hard, hand on heart that you could find a plugin for it and on many many occasions they are free so really focus on plugins and the other thing you want to focus on is, is themes. Yeah, we looked at the storefront theme. There's a storefront pro theme, yeah, which is actually paying. Typically themes cost around sort of $50, something like that. It's normally a sort of one-off payment. And normally they throw in six months of support for that as well, which given what you get um, is unbelievable value. Yeah, and it can really bring another layer of professionalism to your site. You know, the site we've created looks great. And it's subjective. Some people might look at it and go, wow, that looks absolutely brilliant. Other people might think, well, no, it's okay. It looks, you know, it looks good, but it's not exactly how I want. I want a better looking store. And that's absolutely fine, of course. So you might want to look at other themes or, as I say, just maybe go to Storefront Pro and build on what you have. So there you go. You know, uh, unbelievable. If you've done all of that, if you've, if you've been through, if you set up your site, and uh, you know, you've been through all of those steps and you're looking at more or less a site that I've got that you have built yourself, you should be massively, massively proud. So uh, I just want to spend the next couple of lectures. Basically, what I want to do is, is just whet your appetite for the future. I want to talk about where you might want to go with this because there are two main possibilities. So let's dive into the first one.
So in the intro to this course, I talked about two main areas that you could build on having done this course. Yeah, One of them was uh, to become a developer, to actually develop websites, and the other one was to actually build out your own e-commerce store. So let's take those two in turn. Let's talk about becoming a WordPress developer, because when you first heard me say that, you might have thought to yourself, well, you know, that's never going to happen. <laughs> you know, that's not really me, or I can't imagine I'd have the knowledge to do that, or whatever it might be. Yeah, But you do. You now have the knowledge, yeah? You have, I mean, okay, you've got the basic knowledge. There's an awful lot more that you can add on, as I was talking about in the previous lecture. But you do have a very solid foundation to build on should you want to do that. Now, the beauty of being a, a developer of internet sites in this way is that you can do this from anywhere, yeah? You can supplement your income if you have an existing job, or you could build this out as a full-time thing if you wanted to. And you can work from anywhere. And, you know, the way the internet is set up these days, it's super, super easy for you to advertise your skills and for people to get in contact with you. So let me just show you one site that you can, you know, let, that you can have a look at and you can really start to think about whether this is something that you might want to do. So I'm over here on a site called Freelancer. Yeah, there are there are many sites like this. But the idea is that it brings together people doing freelance work, surprisingly enough, and people who need jobs done. Yeah, so it's a marketplace, basically, where you as the freelancer can advertise your skills and the person looking to hire you can view your skills, see what your resume looks like, look at testimonials, look at how much you charge, and then get in contact with you directly. And this is exactly the sort of site that if you want to get involved with WordPress development, that you want to have a look at. Now, I appreciate that, you know, if you are brand new to this, then clearly you do have very limited experience. So the first thing you'll want to do is to build out that site. You know, that you can by all means take exactly what I did and just build it out. Uh, maybe put your own spin on it, but build that out. And that's going to be the first thing on your CV, on your resume. And don't forget, it's not just WordPress that you know about. You know about WooCommerce, you know about Storefront, you know you know about payment providers. There's an awful lot more in just a very short period of time that we've covered that you can definitely list you know, as bullet points in your experience to date, okay? So let's just have a look at this. I wanna show you both sides, right? So I wanna show you as if I was somebody looking to hire because that's gonna give you an idea of how much you could charge. So it's very straightforward. Yeah. So imagine I'm looking to hire. It says, what do you need done? So I just type in here simply WordPress. And I'm going to click on get free quotes. Now I'm not going to go through this whole process because that's not what I want to show you. I want to show you that uh, the budgets. Yeah. So for a very small project, they're asking, well, I would have to pay 250 to 750 euros. That's not bad, right? If I open this up, we can see some, obviously, you know, we're diving into some very, very high numbers here. But let's keep it real, certainly in the beginning, yeah? These sorts of numbers, you know, why not? You could very quickly be into this kind of stuff with two or three projects under your belt. No problem. If I select hourly rate, then you get an idea that you can charge 12 to 18 euros, yeah? In this particular instance, you might, you know, might decide it might be a bit less, it might be a bit more, but that's the standard, that's the average, that gives you a very nice starting point, and that may well excite you, bearing in mind that, you know, you can do this in your free time from anywhere. So let's have a look at another part of the site where it's this bar up here, become a freelancer, the bit that you would actually want to do. So if you click on this, you know, it wants you to sign up, etc. I'm not going to do that. Uh, at the moment, but basically it says become a freelancer and earn money, right? Pretty straightforward. So you browse jobs matching your skills, you apply for work, you get hired and you earn money. And the thing I just want to show you is towards the bottom of this page. So let me just scroll down here to this part here. Browse the top six freelancers in each category and you'll see that WordPress is in itself a category. It gives you an idea for demand, right? Hi. <laughs> so click on WordPress and what we now have as well as the, the cost that we were sort of looking at just now, we also have these top six WordPress developers hired this month. And I'm just showing you this because it kind of gives you an idea. Yeah. So we have somebody from Vietnam, we've got a guy from Pakistan, from Australia, from India. You know, there's, there's a, a full spread across the world, depending on where you are. And these are their testimonials. Yeah. And I can click on here and get more and more information, or I can simply click on hire me. So if I wanted to hire this guy, for example, in Australia, I would click on them 
And there we go. This guy's charging 35, sorry, that just came away a bit quickly. Let's go back. $35 an hour. Yeah, is what he's charging. Now he's got various other skills. Some of this you might recognize, some of this you might not. But, you know, by using this site, you can very quickly get an idea of how much you might be worth, let's say, in the market. And certainly if you price yourself at, let's say, 15 euros, 15 US dollars, 15, 20, something like that, don't go too low because people won't take you too seriously. But don't go too high at the same time because as I said before, you don't have the uh, the experience quite yet. So you're looking to get that first one or two projects under your belt before you can start ramping things up a bit. So there we go. That's Freelancer. You know, I haven't, my intention was not to give you a tour of the site at all. I wanted just to whet your appetite to perhaps excite you about what is possible with these kinds of sites and how easy it actually is to go out and earn great money. So the second thing you might want to consider is building out an e-commerce business. It's entirely possible for you to do that, should you have that aspiration, yeah? I mean, again, uh, I repeat myself, but you've got the foundation, the building blocks basically now of an e-commerce store. Now, what you don't have is, you know, you don't know about uh, finding markets and products to sell in those markets and make money. You don't know about driving traffic to your store. Um, you know, I haven't covered that in this course intentionally. That's not what this course is about. It's about building an e-commerce store. But should you want to have that aspiration to build out an e-commerce business, then, um, you know, I do have another course uh, should you want to do that. So let me show you that course. It's also free. Uh, you know, I'd love to have you as a student and to build on the knowledge of what you already have. Uh, and my course basically teaches you how to build a $10,000 a month business. So let me just show you where that is. So here I am over on uh, udemy.com and depending on where you've seen this course, you may or may not know about Udemy, but it's uh, an amazing marketplace for courses. Um, and yeah, I've got uh, a handful of courses at the moment, a growing number. So uh, let me just show you how you can find the course that I'm talking about. So Udemy is udemy.com. And in the search for courses part, if you just type my name, Tim Sharp like that, and just search on me, it's going to bring up this course here. This is the one you want. Make money, the complete WordPress AliExpress dropship course. And if you click on that, then it's going to tell you basically all about the course. Um, you can see currently that I have almost 10,000 students who are taking this course. It's a four and a half hour course. It's completely free. Um, yeah, I'd love you to come and join me. Uh, a massive amount more to teach you there. Many, many aspects of what you might want to, to learn about actually building out a proper business, which could really, in fact, replace your nine to five jobs. I get emails a lot from people saying how the course has genuinely uh, changed their life. So there you go. That's that course. Um, the other thing that I would just like to show you is my YouTube channel. So this is my YouTube channel. You're very welcome to come and join me on that too. Come and subscribe. I, uh, for the moment, I'm basically loading up my courses also on this channel and talking about other tips and tricks that you might find useful. So there we go. So if you want to, to if you're aspiring to become or to create a fantastic e-commerce business, I can definitely help you out and I'd love to have you on board. Hi guys, and thank you so much for taking the course. I hope you got a massive amount out of it. I've certainly thoroughly enjoyed having you along and teaching you all these fantastic skills. I hope if you haven't done already that you've subscribed to my channel and liked the video. And of course, if you wanna join my Facebook group, you will find the link in the comments below. So I'm gonna sign off now. I'm gonna wish you all the best with your future and your new found knowledge.